on your mobile apps, wherever you are, on the seven continents, Aquaba. Welcome to the space here inside of the Africa Forum. It is running African, as we said before, a Pan-African place, an African-centered space. We cut and clear and create a space. Knowing that when our God and our Savior look like our master and our enslaver, then we become the principal agents in our destruction. Just slightly misquoting our elder ancestor, Dr. Ben Yakanan. But can you imagine it, just as an aside, that black people, African people, are the only people whose gods in this time, in this time, and especially African diaspora African people. And we see this happening, continental Africa now. That's a whole different story. We'll talk about that another time. But can you imagine that we are the only people whose God don't look like us? The only people whose God do not look like us. We create our gods, but we make them to look like other gods. Or others create our gods for us. And so that our God looks like the enslaver. What a psychic trauma. What a lot of work we've got to do. In your mind's eye, what does God look like when you dream of angels? Or when you think of angels, what do they look like? Can you even think of, conceptualize an angel or a god that looks like you? Think of an angel. That is black, skin color, melanated. Thank you very much. Did you make a beautiful one? <laughs> or did you, did you struggle? Did you struggle because you're thinking of the angel and instead of an angel, you kept seeing the devil? Because God knows the devil is black, isn't the devil black? So that this is how this what they this what they told us. This is how we have come to see ourselves. So that even to identify or to conceptualize, to think of in our mind, creating our mind in our thoughts, to bring from our thoughts to our consciousness. An angel. We carry forth white angels with white wings <laughs> and white gods. And blackness is interesting, you know. And that's one of the reasons why we keep saying African in this space and hardly say black. And I've been challenged on this many, many times by good friends, not so good friends, and acquaintances. And so why I talk about African as about to, as, as, as as opposed to talking about black and why I talk about blackness being political. You see, because it, it, the bottom line, just think about it, is that blackness or or to be black happens only in comparison to that which is white, and so that to be black is to compare yourself to that which is not black or that which is white. So blackness arises in comparison to that which is white or that which is considered white. You see the connection. Maybe you're not getting it. Maybe you get it immediately the minute I say it, but just think about it. It's political. Racist and political. We have bought into it and, 
Yeah, I'm not even bashing ourselves because I use it too, even though I don't use it a lot. I talk about being African. I'll settle with that. And then there's another discussion about what it means to be African and whether or not Africa was the first name for the continent. You know, continental Africa emerged and developed as tribes. And so that to find ourselves, we have to get back to tribes because before there were countries, there were tribes. And what, you probably don't want to say tribes, you probably want to say ethnic groups. Because that is political correct thing to say. Because tribes carry a whole other connotation. So to be politically correct, you want to say ethnic groups. But this is how continental Africa developed. So you had Bantu, Igbo, uh, and so on. Um, Akan, as opposed to Ghanaian or Nigeria. Nigeria isn't even our name. That, that name was given to that country by the same enslavers. But then there's a, there's a conversation about what was the original name for the continent. And, and, and there, there are many people who talk about uh, it being al Kembalan. I do not agree with that because my research, and I've had many conversations on this with those who have also done the research, that when you find the al, al, in Africa, then you'd have gone far as far back as to the other enslavers, the Arabs. So that al Kebulon would not necessarily have been the ancient name either. But there are many who have gone back to Africa um, in terms of a name, Africa. One of the reasons why people say that um, Africa wasn't the original name, that it was named after the Roman Africanus. Uh, because, because, of course, Africanus had made many claims, but one of the claims Africanus did not make was that the continent was named after him. As a matter of fact, if you study Roman history, European history in any way, one of the things that you'll know is that when the Romans were going out to conquer and to conquer, one of the things they did is that when they so-called conquered spaces or fought in spaces and won wars and so on, that they took on the names of those places. And so that Africanus took on the name of Africa to say that he fought and won. Not that he gave his name to Africa. Africa, the name and the place existed long before Africanus. So the, the conversation that Africanus, um, that Africa was named after this Roman, white Roman, it's, it's not true. It's not true. It is a misnomer, but we repeat it a lot. Um, the, the, we can have a conversation one of these days. I, I think it is worth discussing what the original name of the continent Africa um, was. From all of my research, and I've been doing years and years and years of research, I have come down on Africa, even if we said Africa, or or closer to 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 what the um, the ancient Kemetians would have called it, um, with with a U. But 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 I have not I have not found a name that was older than Africa, and Al Kebalon is not it, not in my research, and and I know that I'm coming up on the research of Dr. Ben in this regard and i've had conversations with dr ben before um he transcended about this and, and we can have this conversation with the scholars we can have these conversations with the scholars i don't think it is a big 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 deal but you know history is my alibi and we want to ensure that even when we are revisiting history that we ourselves do not make some of these um 
mistakes or perpetuate the mistakes that have been made. So anyway, that's a whole aside. I now have to, didn't mean to say all of that. I now have to take a break. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> all right, so lots and lots happening in the background. Once again, thank you for joining us on the Africa Forum. A whole heap of things happening this uh, Heritage Week and Heritage Month. It's also Black History Month in in the UK. A lot happening there in the UK also. By the way, October 15, that's yesterday, marked the 35th anniversary of the assassination of the revolutionary Pan-Africanist Thomas Sankara. Sankara, of course, president of Burkina Faso, assassinated on October 15, 35 years ago. Bob Marley's right, how long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Brother wrote me this morning from the continent of Africa. He said, as African people, our, our tolerance levels are too high. <laughs> our tolerance of oppression and, and so on. So yes, October is Black History Month in the UK. They started observing that one about 1987. The Ghanaian Pan-Africanist and journalist Adai Sabo was the one who spearheaded that. All right, there's something happening uh, this week that we want to talk a little bit about now. And for that, as a matter of fact, it's starting today. For that, I'm going live to... Going live to Moortown in uh, in portland one of my favorite places wow up in the mountains up in the hills just that they've made it so that it is terribly hard to get to but here we are colonel sterling uh is on the phone lines and i'm sure colonel probably um have you been up all morning now just trying to get things off because things are kicking off um just in just a few hours so today starting today into tomorrow the annual Nanny Day celebrations in Moortown. And Colonel Sterling is on the line. Colonel, good morning. How are you doing? Hey, may I tell you, may I tell you, my dear, how are you doing? Well, may I tell you, may I tell you. You, 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 you actually made the, the right description. I, I'm not saying assumption, but description of what is taking place now. Yes. Matter of fact, I was up early. I went to bed very late and I got up very early mm-hmm. because they have got, got quite a bit of things to get done today. Yes, today I can just the say. first day of our celebration. Yes, yes. And today we are going to be concentrating on the language that our poor parents have spoken with. Mm-hmm. The common language as we know it, but we know it, it's the derivative of the Three language and had a African language. Mm-hmm. No, the three language was the more dominant one mm-hmm. in the mix. I can. So, so let me let me ask you this first of all, um, for our listeners who do not know what we're talking about. So, we say the annual Nanny Day celebration. Tell us what that is. Um, just okay. put that in context so, for us. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, as as we choose to describe it, today is a day when we when we set aside to honor our priestess. Mm-hmm. Our queen, mm-hmm. our indomitable chieftainess, and our mother, Grandi Nani. Grandi you notice know I say Grandi Nani. Yes. We, ne- we never normally say Grandi Nani. Mm-hmm. Grandi Nani is what we all we refer to her. Grandi Nani. Right. Yes. Yes. And and so um, this this is here we are now in the middle of another celebration. Two days of celebrations. Two days. Because you see, you Kabu, we think it is very important from our standpoint. That language, like anything, they say, if you don't use it, you will do it. And it is such a beautiful language. It is something that, it, it, even though it was codified in a sense, but it was able to, to give impetus to all people when they were fighting against the colonial master. It is mm-hmm. a language that, that really, that, that they use for communicating that nobody else would have known it except themselves. Mm-hmm. So it, in, in the language, in and of itself, was a weapon, a tool that was used against the masters, because you could mm-hmm. stay in front of them and plan what you want to plan, how you're going to execute it, and 
and go ahead and do it and nobody would have known. Yes, and I, be, yes. basically in front of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so we we think that. Yeah, the most yeah I agree with you that language is important. Of course, yeah. um, memory is in the language. Memory is in the tongue. Memory is in the language. It's in, in what we say. And, and I know that even in, in, the, in, the, in the maroon communities across Jamaica, that the language, to some extent, has been uh, preserved, but that little by little by little, when, when we have been losing that over time. What do you think is responsible for that? First of all, I, 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 I want to say that I would lay the first blame on host the people ourselves. Mm-hmm. Because if there's a time when, when, when you have to adapt to changes and you have to know when to let go of something. And mm-hmm. because nobody was allowed to use the language except our poor parents, right? And ourselves by extension today. Mm-hmm. Then it was not taught in school. It was, it was a language that was used mainly at play. And when, you know, the elders. Yeah, that, that is after the fighting was over, and many many years after that, I'm thinking about more, you know, mm-hmm. in the in the 20th century mm-hmm, mm-hmm. coming on, you know. I even I, 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 I would dare to say part of the 19th century, but let's say from the 20th century, yes, there about. So, so less and less persons would have been engaged, and if if you are not at the play where the language was used extensively, mm-hmm. then you might not know. And and it's not that you come home from school. And your parents are going to tell you, say, okay, mm-hmm. but you have to speak this language at home. Yes, yes. Because you are learning something different in school. Mm-hmm. And when you come home, your parents themselves anyway would have known what you have learned in school. Yes, yes. So, so you, that, was, that would have been the, the language that was used mm-hmm. at home. Mm-hmm. But yeah. now what we are saying is that, mm-hmm. you know, yes. we have much more modern ways and means mm-hmm. of dealing with this thing. And I think it is more than appropriate time that we did. We started it some time back with the UNESCO mm-hmm. project that we were doing, and we need to, to continue to make it yes. what it had to be. Yes, that, was a, that was, a, was a pretty good project. Um, do you, so, so, but, but uh, what about the songs? Because it seems to me as if um, somehow we have managed to retain in the songs um, a lot of the, the, the language, the, the well, you're saying, I'm not quite sure what you're saying, Coromanti language, but we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, but, but, the, but, but the Bantu languages or the Akan languages or so on. So, so what, 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 what are your, your, your thoughts on the extent to which we have managed to preserve some of this through, through the songs? Well, you see, there again, you know, the songs were, were the record keepers of the community. If you know what I mean, right? That means yes. you think about your exploiting back, you think about social commentary, and you record these things like, for example, the song that says, Granny Nani Komo Yahweh Yanami, Granny Nani Komo Yahweh Yanami, She be na Hanabo Yahweh Yanami, She be na Tony River Yahweh Yanami, She be na Motown Yahweh. So that song is recording the movement of yes. Granny Nani. Yes, yes, yes. She said that she was in Hanabo, she said she was in Tony River, that is the place that the government called Nani Town, mm-hmm. and she said she was in Motown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so that, that's yeah. a beautiful example yes. of something that could have lost than us. Yes. But we know that, you know, there's a place in Africa that is known as Anabo. And mm-hmm. for some reason, somehow or the other, she was there. Whether she was in a port right. area, that is where she originated exactly. from. Exactly. Is, that is yeah. up, up, up for debate. And that is in the song. Well, well, it finds itself in the song. So um, it's it's, it's an oral history that we're dealing with. And that's one of the reasons why I think what you're doing today in in Motown is critical. Um, Today, especially, it's two days. So tomorrow is is a massive celebration. Today is more of the um, conference conference Conference. setting. Yes. Yes. So So, to that extent, Kabu, may I say that we're going to have presenters like... um, well, you might know him, know him as Robert Russell, but he just is called Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I call Joe. We're going to have presenters like um, Hubert Devanish from mm-hmm. the Linguistic Department at the University of the West Indies. Who has done a lot of research in this field. Who have done an half of that research. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of, one of his students, Arlene Henry, who, is now, who has now a PhD in the language. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so we, mm-hmm. we're going to have those persons. And we have persons from South Africa. Mm-hmm. That will be joining us. Yes. Yeah. That will be joining us. Mm-hmm. Um, 
on online because it's gonna we're gonna have the Zoom connection. I mean, the way the world is now, you don't have yeah. things like that. I don't have a Zoom link. Right. So, so we have these main we have these presenters: so, uh, Hubert Denovish and um Audie and Kojo, Henry. Henry. Who else? Um, um, Professor Benayaya. He used to be the well. He was a former president of the college. Okay, yes, a call of, call of I culture in Portland. Is, I, remember, I know him very, very well. So okay. is, is, will he be joining from, from, from Ghana? From or, Ghana. Oh, from Ghana. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. He will be joining right. from Ghana. Yes. And, and, and then there are others, you know, mm-hmm. like people from the, the Central Hebrew Council of the Americas will mm-hmm. be joining us as well, too. I'm very happy about that because I think um, there's so much of the Igbo... Um, retention here in Jamaica that we have not necessarily fleshed out. And this is one of the reasons why I talked about um, there's a misunderstanding, for example, I think, among so many of us when we talk about um, that we are Koromanti, because Koromanti is not uh, um, an ethnic group. Koromanti is a place in in Ghana. It doesn't represent an ethnic group. It represents a place in Ghana from which Africans were shaped. We are cognizant of that, and I don't, I think what our forefathers did when they when they refer to the place as when they refer to the language, the clear and everything as Kromanti, is the fact that they were held in that fort there yes. for a while, and many of them used it to as yes. a matter of saying, "Okay, fine." So we all this is a region. This is a region that they were finally shipped from, and right. and um, and and it's it's really a sad, a sad, sad um, space. You know, we have been there, Sister P and myself, and so many others of us have been to to the region. We have spoken to the chiefs there, and so on. It's a sad. Um, experience um, for us to say, and, and yet we talk so much about um, Coromante. But but so so, so um, for those who can't make it to Moortown today, yeah. uh, how do they participate and or get to listen in to they the conference? Can, they can join us and by via Zoom. Mm-hmm. And I have I have. I have sent. I have sent the link to you. I think right? you sent me the link. So yes, let me let I me um me. let me pull that up and uh, so, so, and let so, our listeners no, know. There are two links, you know, the one for today and the one for tomorrow. So the one for no, today. No no, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Tomorrow link. I don't think we put up tomorrow link as yet because we don't want people to confuse. It. All right. So <laughs> I have the ID. I have the ID for tomorrow. Yes. Right. So, so the link. The link is there as well too. Yes. Once you go, once you go on the ID, it's yes. an open Zoom page. You, you'll be able to join in. Oh, you don't have to put in a password. All right, so, so so the ID, let me just give our listeners the ID then. Yeah. Right. So, so. Just, just in case, just mm-hmm. in case you don't, somebody don't understand, the link is also sent as well. All right. Well, well, I have a link, but I'm not. I'm not going to be able to send it. But um, let me just say eight four five. The ID for today, if you want to listen in, um, joined by Zoom into the uh, Grand Inani, uh conference that's happening out there in Moortown. I start at ten. It starts at ten o'clock. So it's eight four five nine four five seven one two three zero. That's eight four five nine four five seven one two three zero three zero. All right. Thank you so much, um, Colonel. So Monday now. Um, yeah. What's happening tomorrow? That's Monday. So tomorrow now is when we have what you can say, like the regular part of the Nani Day celebration. Mm-hmm. So we'll be out on Bomb Grip. Yeah. We'll be having, you know, all the other Maroon leaders. They're going to be there. And mm-hmm. other, you know, invited guests. And most of the persons who are here today mm-hmm. will be there tomorrow as well to, to make presentation again too. Yes, yes. So, and then, you know, it's a day of fun. It's a day of honoring as I said before, our indomitable chief tennis, our mother, because we are we are going in any area. So if we are going in any area, yeah, yeah, we have to we have to handle that. Mm-hmm. Have it. Of course, of course, yeah, children so. of children of Gandhi So that it's two, it's two day celebration. We yes. um beginning today. If you can't make it today, fine. Check the Zoom links. If you can, then go over to to Morton. What about people who want to come over from today and spend the two days? It, it, are there places that people can stay? Uh, most of the places are taken thus far. Oh, okay. We're full up already. Yeah, too late people, now. But, but most mm-hmm. of them are taken. All right. So too late now but if you want to. Because over. we have people like, say, from... from I, I, and I should have mentioned that we have people here from, from Goddard College in the United States. Okay. And we have, and we have 
a two person representing representing the Garifuna as well. Oh, so brilliant! Be, yes. So they will be representing there, and you know, in Jamaica mm -hmm. we have the Taino community. Yes. Yes. Be, Kalan will be here as well today mm -hmm. and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we have really an excellent lineup of what we want to do. Yes. Because at the end of the day, what we are trying to do is. It's not necessarily about us who are alive today, but about the generation that is yet to come. Of course. So, yeah. to, so if you can't make it today, do, do the Zoom. And then tomorrow is a big celebration, um, yeah. but it's a two days of, of celebration yeah. in Motown. Today, today, mm -hmm. today is a classroom kind of situation. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, check the Zoom out and then um, head to Motown tomorrow. What are the roads like, Colonel? <laughs> the roads are excellent. <laughs> so the road in Motown has white marking. Mm -hmm. What do you mean white marking? So, I mean, when you do a good road, you put the white markings, the median, in the road. Oh, I see what you mean. So the roads are good now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, okay, fine. So for example, from Purenton to Coffee, it's mostly good road, right? Uh -huh. but, but in Moretown itself, mm -hmm. once you turn on and in, the roads are like, then newly paved. Oh, brilliant. And we just, we just wouldn't have the celebration with the road in a deplorable situation. Okay, and all right. Of, the member of Parliament, I must say a shout out to her. Right. She work closely with, 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 with TEF and we get some funding and the road is excellent. So I, I just want to congratulate her for her excellent work in that in that regard. That, that's that's Anne-Marie Vaz? That's Anne-Marie Vaz. Okay, brilliant. Good work. Um, yes. so, so So it's easy work. And I was thinking the roads were not so good, but there's, uh, do we still have challenges once we leave... Um, uh, we want to leave Port Antonio? No, I want to leave Port Antonio. The road is relatively much better than some places in Kingston and other places. Okay, like so, so easy. Because I know they were working on, on that stretch of road between um, it, Blue it, Lagoon and, and out that way. So that, 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 that fits no, no, now? No, 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 no. Not that, yeah, oh, that side, but not in Port Antonio. If you are coming to the junction, right. if, you, if you come to St. Thomas, then you're going to have a challenge that you, because they're working on the road. But if okay. you come to the junction, it's not coast. Anyway, they're mandible. Uh -huh. So when we reach Port Antonio, where we figure, then we're not supposed to, we're not, we're not drive to get to more town. Mm -hmm. Where you turn off? Um, so, it, it, so, so what I would say to people, if you are coming, say, from the junction, right? Mm -hmm. Once you come into Port Antonio, where the Senate office is, that is that white column. In the, in well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because hold on, don't move. Let me just take a quick time signal. I believe in a Jamaica with no guns. I believe in a safer Jamaica for you and me. The time brought to you by the office of the Prime Minister is... 6.51 and you're inside of the Africa Forum. So we're trying to get to, Na to more tone, to Nanny Day celebrations. And uh, Colonel um, Sterling is on the line, kind of giving us directions in this point now, in this segment of the program, as to how to get to, to more tone. So if okay. you're coming from... If you're coming from Ocho Reyes, Montego Bay... Mm -hmm. you get into Port Antonio Town, in front of the market, the most great market, there's a white column, the Senate up. You turn right on that road. That is William Street. You go to the top of William Street, you turn right again. When you get up to the place called Crossroad, you just continue bearing right. You're going to see the sign that says Rafting and Royal Grande or to More Town. Mm -hmm. Follow those signs. It's a good road. You keep right, just keep right. Your only other turn you have to make is when you get to Fellowship, and that is four miles from Port Antonio. Mm -hmm. You turn left, and there's a directional sign there mm -hmm. that points you where the rafting is, and mm -hmm. it points you to where more to on Mill Bank is. So you turn left at the mm -hmm. big bridge in Fellowship. Okay. You a, a small one, a narrow mm -hmm. one, but mm -hmm. the, in the square of Fellowship, you turn left. Take the road that takes you left, and you continue bearing right. You have no more turn to make, mm -hmm. and it's a straight road from there. And as I say, any road that have on a market and it's part of that one. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now, once you come into more town, it's yes. the road that goes down the hill. The sign is there as well, pointing you to where you should go. All right, brilliant. So um, all roads leading to, to more town uh, today and tomorrow for right. the uh, celebrations uh, okay. of our national hero, our mother, our queen, Grandi Nani. Thank you so much, Colonel Sterling. Looking forward to see you tomorrow. Yeah, I, I must say, my daddy too. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much yeah. for having me. Akwaba. We, we, we will be on Zoom. We'll, we'll be on the Zoom today, and then we'll try and head out there tomorrow. All right. Okay.
thanks. All right. Give thanks. All right, Colonel Sterling, there in more town. So it's happening. It's going down. <laughs> uh, as usual, the Grand Inanna Day celebrations in more town. Always, always really, 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 really good. So you can't afford to, to miss this at all. It's always, always a good um, get-together of African people in more town. All right, once again today and tomorrow. You inside of the Africa Forum, it is running African. So last week we told you we tried to get um, Prince Hermes on the line and and didn't. And so last week we told you and we were told that this was going to happen, that you would be in studio. Well, no, he's going to be on the phone and we're going to be linking with him in just about six minutes or so to have a quick telephone conversation with him before he goes uh, to church later on today. Also, later on in this program, you know, we're going to be linking with, um, making another link with Mo- to Moortown because I think my brother Roger Hasfall is making his way to Moortown and I think my brother Dwight Fraser is making his way to Maxfield Avenue where the, the church service will be today. So you'll get those, um, those, uh, those links, whether later on today, uh, in uh, between 10 and, and, and 2 o'clock or so um, here on IRFM. So we'll keep you informed and up to date. Now, uh, lots of conversation on the ground at 5 minutes to 7. Lots of conversations on the ground uh, about the new... Well, not so new, but the press release from the Broadcasting Commission referring to the banning of certain songs. Later on in the program this morning, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that. Very nuanced, you know, very nuanced, very complex, because the bans that have been announced were already in place. This is the first thing to know. In other words... We know, and I'm speaking as a former program director, and I've been a program director in the system for 31 years. Um, So we know that the the bands were already in place. So we know you can't play um, gun lyrics, you can't play um, songs uh, to do with scamming, um, you can't play certain songs that have expletives, etc., etc., etc. So those are policy um, rules. They've been in 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 the system forever um, from from I've started working in radio we know that ever so often though we've had some you know you, you'll have different presenters DJs radio stations um, breaking those rules the broadcasting commission would um, immediately or sometimes we pick them up ourselves uh, but if we don't then the broadcasting commission would. When I was a program director, I know the way we used to do it is that if that happens and I hear it or somebody calls in to say, here's a song that was played and, you know, why and the question, because you're not going to hear everything, even though there are uh, music sheets and so on, that you, you, you know the protocol. One is you're going to have to apologize. Two, um, you inform the Broadcasting Commission or the Broadcasting Commission is going to be informing you. And, and there's a process. Um, sometimes there are penalties, are serious, some penalties more serious than others. Some penalties lead also to the um, suspension of the DJ or the presenter or whatever. So it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole, you know, bag of stuff. And all of that is, that's already in place. The fact that the Broadcasting Commission came out and made this statement is interesting to me. Because all they had to do was to meet with the media managers and the media owners to say, we are clamping down and we are going to be very even more strict on the rules and the regulations that are already in the Children's Code for programming. And if you break those, this is A, B, C, D, E, what what would happen? The fact that they made a public announcement about banning um, certain songs, types of songs, music, that they have already banned um, generically is interesting. What I have looked at, though, what's different this time is that there is a catch 
in the announcement of a statement that's been put out, and this is where I have a problem, because now the Broadcasting Commission has said that um, you, any other, so all these songs are, are banned, and any other um, illegal or criminal activities in terms of talking about, or they say glorifying, any other illegal or criminal activities, you have to understand that with that one line, before ganja was decriminalized and it's still not legal, Peter Tosh's Light Up Your Chalice in a Buckingham Palace could not be played on air. Bob Marley's I Feel Like Bombing a Church, I Shot the Sheriff, etc., etc. And there are many, many more, you know. Not only that, future speech is, has been caught in this net. Protest music has been caught in this net. Um, uh, when you challenge injustices, which are legal, that's been caught in this net. And this is why, before we jump up and prance up and dance up about what the Broadcasting Commission has done and how good it is, we have to spend some time talking about it. I hope I get some time later on in the program. I need to give myself that time, don't it, um, to have that conversation. Let me take a quick bye to speak with HRH Prince Ermia Salis Selassie, who is on the island here in Jamaica for the, as part of uh, uh, Jamaica's Heritage Week celebrations. Prince Amias is the, the, oops, no, no, not there. All right, so um, Sharika, I got a dial tone. Could you try that again? Prince Hermes is the president of the Crown Council of Ethiopia. I know that many of you are hearing about the Crown Council of Ethiopia for the first time since Prince Hermes um, was invited to come in. Uh, it's been a while since I've had discussions here on this program about the Crown Council, but it's something that we had... Um, Many, many, many conversations about in the early to mid-1990s. And um, I even traveled. I remember uh, traveling to Washington, D.C. in 1990-something <laughs> to interview then Asfa Wassen. Uh, right. And, um, and I had, I remember having, met in, you know, in the early 90s, many, many, many interviews with members of the Crown Council, including um, Asfa Wassen himself. Um, you also will recognize um, Prince Ermia Saleh Selassie because he's been uh, in this space more than once over the years. And you recall that we traveled to Washington, D.C. Um, just, what, two, three years ago, just before COVID, to uh, the Ethiopian Embassy in uh, Washington, D.C. for the celebrations of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor Haile Selassie, and interviewed yes. then yes. Um, Prince Ermia Saleh Selassie. He's on the f phone lines right now, President of the Crown Council of Ethiopia, Prince Ermia Saleh Selassie. Uh, Prince Ermia, good morning. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jamaica. All right. Good to have you in the space. Last time we, we talked, I was in the embassy in Washington, D.C. Don't know if you remember that, but we did an interview yes, with you right there. I do remember. I was sitting around <laughs> the, uh, in the corner. Yes, yes, that little corner. <laughs> Yes, with our little yellow box, but we did pretty well. Yes, yes. Uh, well, welcome to the space. Welcome to Jamaica once again. You're no stranger to Jamaica. You've been here many, many, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes. Um, so I'm, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. I'm very happy to be back. I consider Jamaica my home. Yes. And uh, it's been uh, a couple of days of greater experience, knowledge, mm -hmm. and uh, sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, days, uh, the last few days, and I'm looking for forward to the few days uh, I have left here. Yes. Um. How long will you be here? How long will you be on the island? You said another few days. Uh, no, I have official engagements up uh -huh. to uh, uh, Friday, I believe. Okay, brilliant. And then mm -hmm. I travel, I have a little downtime and I travel over the weekend. Okay, and I know you go to church today. Um, once yes. we're finished talking here, you'll be at the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and on my street. Very much, yes. very much. I'm looking yep. forward to that. All right. Very uh, much. Well,
well, okay. And, uh, we, I have a special relationship with that church because I was very close to Abu Naysak, mm-hmm. who I know dedicated his life to making sure that church exists. Mm-hmm. So I like to also pay tribute to him because mm-hmm. I know how dedicated he was in his work to fulfill yes. his majesty's wishes. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Prince Hermes, uh, we, we have had many discussions over the years, but we have new listeners who come and younger listeners who have come to this space, and many who I know this morning um, are only hearing about the Crown Council now that you have come on to the island. Um, so I want to talk to you for a few minutes about that um, before we talk about anything else. The the Crown Council. Uh, what, yes. what, yeah, what is the Crown Council? Is your well, the Crown Council as an institution has existed uh, uh, for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, even under the Empire, during my grandfather's reign. Yeah. It consults on issues of national interest. It wasn't a, a political forum. Mm-hmm. So we felt that this is the best way or mm-hmm. participation of those who believe in uh, in the concept of constitutionalism mm-hmm. uh, to enact it in a uh, to revitalize it and enact it and it was regrouped under my uncle uh, the late uh, uh, Crown Prince Atvarsen who later became uh, Emperor Amaha Selassie mm-hmm. and uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's really the work to continue the the history of uh, the crown of Ethiopia, Ethiopianism, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the Orthodox Church, our traditions, our uh, values, mm-hmm. and uh, it was suppressed under both uh, communism, which uh, tried to destroy not only the legacy of monarchy as is and replace it with co- communism, but uh, with spreading false propaganda as to what the crown had contributed or Ethiopia, and history had contributed to Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. So we felt that it was very important to change that narrative. Yeah. And uh, on, on the practical level, the crown council is also very much non-political. It is concerned with humanitarian issues, uh, education, scholarship, uh, philanthropy, uh, and so forth. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we've had success of educating Ethiopians in colleges mm-hmm. in the United States, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we hope to pursue also other humanitarian activities alongside education and other works mm-hmm. inside mm-hmm. Ethiopia itself. Is it is it a delicate balance for the for the council to be non to be non political? Is it a delicate balance, or is it, it is a delicate balance? Mm-hmm. But I think it's uh, it, it, it's it's it's. Uh, it has its own role. Mm-hmm. It has its role in building peace, for instance. It has a role in building bridges. And uh, I think now more that people see uh, its platform, mm-hmm. they're also understanding the complexity and the delicacy, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's through value, too. Mm-hmm. Because you talk about constitutionalism, and um, uh, obviously the Crown Council is in, is, is in exile still. Uh, how, how how does that work in terms of constitutionalism, and what do you mean by constitutionalism? Well, it's a bad now a democracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it under uh, previous regimes, it was uh, uh, communist, uh, really a Marxist-oriented ideology, yeah. uh, and under constitutionalism, where you know. Ethiopians have been able to contribute their own version, their own ideas mm-hmm. to building whatever democracy in their terms mm-hmm. means. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are basically giving Ethiopians the opportunity that they should reevaluate and value their heritage, their mm-hmm. history, and uh, in perspective, analyze the truth yes. in its uh, balanced and meaningful way rather than uh, as it has been, say, for the last uh, 50 years or so, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, political propaganda, which has been the case. So, yes, yes. Uh, I think it's very important now we have a new leadership, forward-looking leadership, uh, and we hope that uh, the Crown can make
make its own contributions. Yes. And, and when you say the Crown, I remember speaking with, uh, uh, it, it was um, Prince Asper Wassen at the time uh, on this program in the, in the 90s, um, before he transcended. And one of the conversations, we had many conversations in this space, you know, one, one of the things that we talked about over and over and over um, was the, um, the restitution of the monarchy and whether or not that was possible. In the early 90s, there was a thinking, it seemed to me, as if that was on the agenda. Um, is that still on the agenda? Yes, absolutely, but mm -hmm. clearly it's going to be the choice of the Ethiopian people. Mm -hmm. But Ethiopian people do need also a choice. Yes. So I think, uh, uh, as you say, it's a new generation. Mm -hmm. it, it has less prejudice than the ones before mm -hmm. who feel that they were over, they overthrew uh, feudal empire uh, and so it in, always in a prism of us against them, mm -hmm. which has never been the case. I mean, you know, the, clearly, uh, Ethiopia did, in the end, be, there was a revolution against the monarchy, mm -hmm. but it was progressive. Initially, it was a coup d'etat done by officers of lower rank who were extremely violent mm -hmm. and who, who sought power above everything else mm -hmm. and destroyed Ethiopia. In, in, the, in a real way yes. and we're paying the consequences because thereafter whatever form of government has come has never mm -hmm. given the Ethiopian people choices, mm -hmm. it's been violent and uh, you know they have to make a decision as to what form of constitutional democracy that they want mm -hmm. and they are ultimately you know the masters of uh, of that destiny. Mm -hmm. Is is that is that discussion happening among the people? Do you know? Uh, you mentioned just now that we see uh, there's new leadership in Ethiopia. We we see where the leadership is going to in terms of how it has um, has a do a whole different kind of attitude to his imperial majesty, the Emperor Haile um, Selassie. Um, so, is this conversation happening any at all outside of the the um, the Crown Council? I think it's, uh, it, it, it's happening in terms mm -hmm. of uh, discussion, especially among, as you said, the new generation mm -hmm. uh, in Ethiopia and I think elsewhere, uh, because Ethiopians are also looking for hope. Mm -hmm. The path that they've uh, taken, they've decided to take, and the world, uh, you know, however goodwill there was to, yes. for the betterment of Ethiopia, had turned for the monopoly of power of a few mm -hmm. uh, despots, basically, mm -hmm. who put their own interest above the Ethiopian people. Mm -hmm. And if they want, uh, you know, to regain control of their own destiny, they have to make uh, studied and reasoned uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. So the leadership in welcoming new ideas, in wanting to build democracy, can't also just implant democracies from overseas. Mm -hmm. It should incorporate Ethiopian history, Ethiopian culture, Ethiopian customs, seeing how progressively we've gone through our own particular history mm -hmm. and implement, you know, what's best policy for Ethiopia and what Ethiopian people can be uh, comfortable with. Mm -hmm. All right, Prince Ermes, I'm going to ask you to hold the line just a short time for me. I want to come back after this break to talk about the Solomonic dynasty so our listeners can have a bit of an understanding of what that really is. Hold for me, please. Good morning, Africa. And my very special guest online is a special guest of Jamaica during this Heritage uh, Week celebrations, Prince Ermia Saleh Selassie, who is president of the Crown Council of Ethiopia, the grandson of uh, his imperial majesty, the Emperor Haile Selassie the first. He joins me on the telephone lines. Uh, right after this, he'll be heading to church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church in Kingston. And I'm not telling you now to flood the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, but flood the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. He, he will be there. Um, Prince Amias, the, the Solomonic uh, dynasty... Uh, uh, well researched uh, there have been some questions along the way but I think generally um, globally accepted that uh, 
this is the, the, the lineage of his imperial majesty, now yourself, would be from the Sol Solomonic dynasty. Tell us, how does that work? How, why? How come? Well, the Solomonic dynasty really alongside the Ethiopian Orthodox Church mm -hmm. had been at the forefront of uh, Ethiopia's history since the third, early 13th century. Mm -hmm. And it's been passed within the family from one king or emperor to the next. It had provided its own sense of stability. It may not have been an absolute... Uh, uh, democracy, but in its continuity, had gradually become uh, more open, more incorporative, and more uh, uh, tolerant, uh, despite uh, the many warfare amongst the various warlords. It was mm -hmm. basically the most stabilizing force that united Ethiopians to fight for an aggression, to preserve our independence, and to continue a vision forward in building sort of a, uh, a democracy based on constitutionalism. And my grandfather worked very, very hard to build the education system so that people understood that progressively this is a, a, a work in progress and that it's a bad did need to develop and incorporate other uh, ideas and elements and build upon its successes. Unfortunately, what happened was there was a very severe and violent disconnect from the Solomonic line, and Ethiopians were told a false narrative about its history, its mm -hmm. own contributions, mm -hmm. uh, as well as its flaws. I mean, there was no perfect system, mm -hmm. but to discount it and erase it or try to erase it from history has not served it because history is always ingrained. I mean, history mm -hmm. is history. Of you course. You can run propaganda against it, mm -hmm. and it happens all the time by mm -hmm. politicians, mm -hmm. but ultimately history is history, identity is identity, and truth is truth. Yes. And in that sense, uh, now mm -hmm. I, I feel that uh, because the system is more open, mm -hmm. Ethiopians can have a more... Uh, clearer and truer version of the contributions of the Solomonic dynasty. And, and, of yes, and of course know. the Crown Council would have um, been critical in, in keeping, um, preserving um, this history, even with yourself um, as, as in the lineage. But has there been, a, as far as you know, uh, and you would know the history much better than most, if not all of us, is, is this an unbroken um, lineage, for, really, from from King Solomon to the Emperor Haile Selassie, then to yourself? Well, there have been uh, two dynasties. There were the Zagwe dynasty that uh, initially came, and then it, it uh, transformed itself uh, uh, under the Solomonic dynasty in 1220-something uh, mm -hmm. under Emperor Kunamlak, which really is the, the, the lineage that uh, directly went through the period until my grandfather in 1974. Okay. So and unfortunately, it also was seen as uh, only inclusive of only one part of Ethiopia, basically uh, the old Abyssinian Empire, uh, mm -hmm. not incorporating uh, the larger empire in, in a big sense, and having only... Uh, focused on Christianity, whereas Ethiopia is a you know multi-religious country. Mm -hmm. uh, these these were the the critical factors. But in all honesty, uh, the Solomonic line is the continuation of a history that Ethiopia should be proud of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and finally, of course, I can't let you go. I know you have to go to church at 7.30, but I, there's no way I could let you go without talking about um, the relationship between yourself and the Rastafari community in Jamaica. Are you Rastafarian yourself? Uh, no, it depends on the about Orthodox Christians. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I try to follow, but that's been my heritage. That's been my family's heritage. And mm -hmm. the Emperor Haile Selassie's heritage is was that he was a devout Orthodox Christian and mm -hmm. his contribution actually mm -hmm. in large part 
to the Rastafarian community or to the community of African in, in diaspora, especially mm-hmm. in the Caribbean, has been to bring the Ethiopian Orthodox Church uh, here. Mm-hmm. So this is the 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 most important uh, legacy in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, my relationship with Rastafarians is uh, of absolute admiration mm-hmm. uh, for their loyalty. They were a community of people who upheld the values of Ethiopianism, mm-hmm. the values of Judeo-Christian culture, and even during the worst of times, never abandoned in the belief mm-hmm. of, uh, in the Solomonic dynasty or yes. in their belief of the Emperor Haile Selassie. So, uh, you know, the, the, the real truth is that we have to separate myth from reality and uh, build upon educating people that uh, there are real values, true values within uh, Rastafarianism and that knowledge is the most important factor. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. And when you say myth from reality, what do you mean? Well, I believe that, you know, His Majesty himself, as a devout Christian, of course, uh, did not believe himself to be a, a god. He was a ordinary human being who knew his limitations, like every other human being, that uh, he tried his best to upheld the values of uh, the Judeo-Christian culture from which he came from and expanded on it by building tolerance and expanding the church's vision to incorporate Africans in the diaspora uh, who had been denied to practice their own version of their religion. And I see, you know, uh, uh, this as its biggest contribution because naturally our people were, were never given the opportunity to worship or to have the identity of choice, but an identity that had been imposed on them. Mm-hmm. And so that the Christ- in the diaspora. And so that the Crown Council itself, um, obviously with you as head, um, will st- work closely and is, has been working closely, um, it appears to me, with um, Rastafari regarding, um, or, or in spite of the fact that you say there is, there is the need to, to separate myths from reality. Yes, of course. I mean, you know, in large part, really also through popular culture, and especially the works on songs of uh, various artists of whom Mm -hmm. I believe Bob Marley probably is at the forefront, but there are many talented artists uh, who have incorporated also Ethiopia's history to a very larger public uh, internationally by educating them of uh, uh, black pride, of contribution, and by drawing a new generation constantly through their arts, through their music, into the knowledge of His Majesty and the knowledge of uh, Ethiopia, the, the larger discussions on, on uh, identity, and also uh, to remind the world of mm-hmm. the tribulation that Africa and the diaspora had suffered is something that you can't just sweep under the rug. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. seek justice... In, in its in its rightful way, in a, in a very clearly defined way, and there are people who have talked to they they were the one of the earliest proponents of uh, repatriation and reparations mm-hmm. that I think in time uh, will take more more uh, 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 interest amongst people and amongst the international community. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just to say, and I know Rastafari um, might be a bit disappointment, disappointed with the statement you made just now regarding um, his imperial majesty, not regarding himself as being um, a, a god. Um, uh, how do you respond to this? Because this is going to be very disappointed, I'm, disappointing, I'm sure, for Rastafari this morning. Th- th- that no, I mean, the, the, this has been a, a discussion, and clearly, uh, uh, as I said, if we're going to stand for truth mm-hmm. and if we're going to educate people, both uh, Rastafarian mm-hmm. and their, uh, whether they're proponents or uh, their supporters, mm-hmm. they have to be able to stand on firm grounds, on firm grounds of truth. Um, and uh, on firm ga- grounds of identity. It is a very 
very clear fact. His Majesty never considered himself uh, a deity, impossible, because he himself was raised uh, and uh, 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 trained in his upbringing to to speak about uh, orthodoxy. Mm-hmm. And he was seen not only as a father of Africa, but as a, as a father of orthodoxy worldwide, simply because of his work to bring tolerance among the, the, the various orthodoxy and to build also Christianity uh, divisions and really teach the values of morality based on that Judeo-Christian culture, mm-hmm. which the Rastafarians team is really basically that. Mm-hmm. But it, it has its own version, and mm-hmm. its own version because it developed in its own pathway, in its own reasoning. And, you know, it, Ethiopian Orthodoxy also is a very tolerant religion. I mean, mm-hmm. Ethiopian Empire, the Solomonic Dynasty, uh, or Ethiopian kings were the ones who, who uh, gave asylum to Muhammad's followers uh, when they were being persecuted in their own nations in Mecca. And, uh, uh, so uh, this is the true history of that region, but that's, it has to be reflected in its, in its true sense rather than, uh, you know, uh, but, but you, but you, uh, sorry to interrupt. But but you'll concede though that most deities do not have not over time did not identify themselves as deities. But 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 somewhere along the line, whether in life or in death, um, they afterwards became so. Um, you you would concede that. I definitely, I see. I've seen it, and I've seen also changes. I've seen, I've seen uh, the very fact that Rastafarianism is not simply based on religion also, but mm-hmm. that it is a way of life, mm-hmm. and it has contributed a lot to uh, fighting oppression, mm-hmm. uh, to trying to build the black pride, yes. trying to incorporate other elements of morality, and mm-hmm. it's a peaceful religion, and okay. it's not one that, I mean, it's a fascinating thing that is really... Uh, and it is a really a become a, a phenomenon in the sense that it's a new religion that's taken a worldwide dimension. But okay. if you see Rastafarianism, even in my own lifetime, progressively, uh, including, you know, the most famous Rastafarian, Bob Marley, <laughs> he yes. converted to become an Ethiopian Orthodox Albeit it was doing his best. Well, well, albeit whether or not he had the, um, he, he, he could have done that, um, or would have done that had he not been on in, in the in the situation that he was. Um, this is going to. I'm, what you have done here is open again um, a space for us to have this conversation. I think it's an ongoing discussion. Um, I think, Mr. Farai, um, as you have said, as, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a. The, the authentic um, response and, and the only authentic response in in recent times in this century um, to oppression and and um, enslavement and, and and injustices and so on. This is what um, it, 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 it is for, for for us on the ground here, um, yes. centered around, of course, His Imperial Majesty, who stood for for peace and justice and unity and so on. Uh, so it's, it's it's an ongoing discussion. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be one fiery one this morning after you've hung up for, from us and you might get questions at church on this. But I want to thank you. Let me give you a final word on that because I interrupted you just now. But let me give you a final word on that before we go. Sure. sure. Well, I, I, I'm glad if it triggers a discussion based on uh, openness, uh, one uh, based on tolerance, and ability to discuss these and things uh, with perspectives because religions also evolve. Religions change. Religions incorporate various different uh, uh, perspectives as they progress. And I think that the same destiny is for Rastafarianism. If you were to ask, what is Rasta? Unfortunately, people immediately associated with smoking weed. They, mm-hmm. they haven't educated themselves, as you said, 
what Rastafarianism really truly stands for in terms yeah. of its core values of yeah. fighting injustice or uh, African pride, mm -hmm. uh, etc. So even that that uh, wrong perspective mm -hmm. has to be changed, yeah. and the larger world, instead of judging, has to begin to understand why Rastafarianism, what Rastafarianism is, and uh, what the, the the its perspective about its way of life mm -hmm. uh, is also because it's not simply a religion that that is counterculture. It's actually a very tolerant religion, and uh, surprisingly, through its popular culture, it's the one that spread the message of its Judeo-Christian heritage mm -hmm. and also also especially the teachings of His Majesty yeah. to a whole new generation that wouldn't have known otherwise. I mean, I have found people who learned through music, especially the youth in Africa, they learned about the, uh, His Majesty or mm -hmm. the history of Ethiopia mm -hmm. through reggae, through Rastafarian culture. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and it, it has a huge contribution. Of course. Because uh, it relates, yes. it relates. Point well taken. It relate with foundation, you know? Yes. Point well taken. As we said before, the only authentic indigenous response to to oppression and slavery um, yes. anywhere, um, you know. So, so wow. Can, can you imagine that? Thank you so much, uh, Prince Ermia Saleh Selassie. As usual, a pleasure uh, talking to you. I'm sorry you couldn't have been in the studio, but next time we invite you to the studio. You come and spend some time with us and we'll take some telephone calls. Yeah, I would look very much forward to that. All right. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And welcome oh, once again oh. to yourself and to your lovely wife. And have a Thank good time you. at church Thank today. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Lots and lots of conversations about reparations happening all over the world right now. And do you believe and would you believe that the way it's happening, we're going to find ourselves with that end of the stick again? I mean, we the people, we're going to find ourselves with that end of a stick again. Because of how it is being done. And if we the people do not take this up from the grassroots upwards and allow it to continue in the way it is going on the trajectory that it is on, we're going to be asking ourselves, how come? How did this happen? Do not think, you know... That the Mao Maos are content with the measly sums that Britain handed out to them the other day. Do not think they are content. There is great um, discontent in Kenya and other places. And we're looking closely at what's happening with reparations and how it is being redefined in this time or not for this time. We must have that conversation. We must speak truth to power. And as a brother texted me and said to me this morning from the continent of Africa, our tolerance levels are too high. So because we see a little thing happening and it looks good on paper, looks good documented, then we think it's happening for us. They are doing something about us without us. That is the bottom line. Preparations are pay. They've been paid out. <laughs> and Syria danced to the big drum and the small drum and the little drum and the in-between drum. But enough reparations are pay out. And they're calling it reparations. And universities and so on are collecting. And we the people are here just dancing to the big drum and the in-between drum and the little drum and so on. So here we are. All right, we're going to go live to the phone lines because once again, we're faced with a situation on the island where we're losing access, access to our coastline, access to our beaches, access to the land. And this is being done systematically um, by whether it is it's a government literally that is allowing this but it is being done because it is legal to do so this is something that should be banned 
Um, we're going to be talking to Dr. Devon Taylor, founder director of Jabem, uh, no stranger to this space, as once again Jabem has taken up the case of another beach, another space that is about to go. Good morning, Dr. Devon Taylor. How are you doing? Good morning, Kabul. Um, good morning um, to your listeners. Um, doing okay, you know. I mm. mean, very challenging week, but um, I think, you know, the Jamaican people are waking up, both mm-hmm. in the diaspora and locally, mm-hmm. and is, um, you know, understanding these critical issues you know, that are happening on our island mm-hmm. in regards to, you know, beach access you know, and land rights. Let us so, look at um, let us look at the are, yes. Let us look at the latest it. one, Devon. Let's look at the latest one. Uh, we have many conversations in this space, you and I, about um, what's happening with these spaces. And you've you've taken this from a perspective of a, a collective perspective, not not necessarily beach by beach by beach, but looking at what the main reason is why. Um, we're losing the coastline and losing the beaches um, in the way we are. And you've pointed to the um, Beach Act. The latest one now is the Bob Marley Beach. Before we go to the Bob Marley Beach, why does this go back to the Beach Act as opposed to um, government's conscience? Yeah, so um, the Beach Control Act of 1956 um, was was put in place at that time, you know, as a form of, you know, coastal management public, I mean, um, policy, but also has uh, legislation that seeks to define what are the rights of, you know, the people. Mm-hmm. And the act was put into place, you know, is really a colonial era act. And it, took into consideration, um, you know, not a general, you know, or inherent right of the Jamaican people. So at the time, the way the leading powers, the way the, the governance of the country, the way others see the Jamaican was in a discriminatory light, you know, um, and so a poly- policy was written, you know, to those, to, to that perspective. And so, was not written to really empower the people. It was not written to um, give people um, you know, general rights to their ecological heritage. It, 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 it violates those rights. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, we all know what colonialism coloniality is. It, I mean, it was not a, a, a system that was um, pro-rights, human mm-hmm. rights. It was not, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's 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 a sl- it's a system that you know um, enslaves people, and that favored so the enslaver. We have to go back and look mm-hmm. at that law fifty six. Yes. That is before um, Jamaica become an independent nation. Yes. So the law needs to be repealed and replaced. All right, and, and this is where and, yes, and this is where Jabem um, is taking this the fight to the government and to the colonial, um, the remnants of colonialism on the island. This is where you're taking it from. Uh, now, the latest, of course, is the Bob Marley Beach. Give us a back story to that and what has happened um, on that beach. Yeah, so um, the, the, um, the, the Bob Marley Beach, as you know, will be a St. Thomas, very close to the border, also, um, a St. Andrew. And so, um, that area um, is classically known as a Sugarloaf uh, Mountain. And that community was actually established by the original um, Mabingi order of Rastafari, you know, after fleeing persecution um, from out of Trenchstone, inner city Kingston, made their way into this space, you know, I mean, in the late 50s, and, um, you know, established the community. Mm hmm. And um, they've been, you know, I mean, that's so far I've been using, living in that space, you know, I mean, you know, what looks like 60 years and more. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, the families, um, you know, you know, and particularly the um, Stevens family, 
descendants of um, Bongo Gabi, one of the original ancient Naya Bingis, mm-hmm. and you know Ras Maka, um, you know that's uh, Vince um, Thomas, you know also a descendant of um, Lucina um, Williams, original um, Rastafari woman, you mm-hmm. know I mean that um, um, exists in that space. Yeah. So those families have been living on that beach for you know four generations, five generations have been out there. Mm-hmm. You know they are you know. Um, you know, prime trades are fishing, you know, I mean, they have their, you know, their uh, legitimate business happening in the space, and a lot of Jamaicans use that space. I mean, Bunny Wheeler was also one of those uh, members, along with Bob Marley, Rita Marley, um, who used that space, mm-hmm. you know, and all of these, um, you know, famous musicians, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, um, Alan Skills Cole used that space, There's, so many Rastafari use that space, benefit from the teaching of Naya Bingi, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Integrating that space, created it for what it is today, yes. established it, and the track that leads down to that beach, you know, is the Rastafari that, you know, made that track. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? To, to really, I mean, as the, you know, a touching story was told to me by um, one of the granddaughter, Kamala, mm-hmm. a story that um, her grandmother would share that, you know, when they got there, um, you know, and clearing that beach, there was so much maca that exists in the space. Mm-hmm. And over time, her grandmother says it is the seed of the women, mm. the seed of the men of Rastafari that remove all the maca from that beach. Wow. And to, to, to see um, now mm-hmm. a company you know, bad property that encircles that space and that the track, the original track, the only track that leads onto that beach runs over this property, right? Mm-hmm. So this property needs no permission from the government to really close the track. Mm-hmm. And as such, they will do so and access to the Bob Marley Beach will be cut off. So let us understand this. Let us understand it. Um, it, You know, I think I've been to every beach on the island, and people who know me know that I'm a beach girl. Thing is, I've never been to the Bob Marley Beach, so I don't know what we are looking at, right? So help help me to understand it and help our listeners to understand it. Because the government came out today through their spokesperson, yesterday I think it was, through Robert Morgan, to say that they are flummoxed. Bamboos, well, is the other word me for not bamboozled, but surprised that um, people are saying that government is denying access to the Bob Marley Beach. Now, he's saying that he can find any of this. The people on the beach, though, know that they have been told to leave the beach. Help us to understand how this is happening. Is there really an eviction order against the people? Or is this being done in such a way as to lock the people off the beach in terms of what I heard you saying just now, that, they, that, that they're closing the access by, by, by locking off the track that goes down to the beach? Help us to understand that. Yes. So it is too hard, all right? And, um, you know, the races are in the space. They get a verbal um, eviction notice, a verbal one. Not a court order is um, in the eviction notice, but verbally. All right? The mm-hmm. representative from the Wolf Group Limited communicated his intention. All right? That um, Friday the 14th, which, um, you know, Friday, um, Friday gone. just passed, mm-hmm. that um, he... You know, was going to um, you know remove um, um, the family from the space and bulldoze the property. Not only that, but also communication come in verbally from member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force based in the building. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean that you know the family um, need to vacate the space <clears throat> because the space is going to be um, demolished and the in- mm-hmm. and the represent and the, the company. Um, you know, need their space. Mm-hmm. So th- that was communicated directly to the family, not one time, not two times. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Multiple and this, and this by the police? Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, the police communicated this. Which are government, yeah, the police which are government workers. Let's just get that right. So Robert Morgan, yeah. Robert Morgan um, obviously has not done his research because the police is no. employed to the government. Yes, no, go ahead. I mean, uh, Mr. Morgan, um, I think... Um, do not understand the issue here. I don't really think, I think they're hurriedly, um, you know, pushed back at this, and I wish, I mean, they are, um, you know, they are expert, they are technical experts in the area of beach control. Act law would sit down and look at this because they need to look at this. Mm-hmm. This ain't no joke. They are the same government in 2020 that put forward this um, beach access management plan of 2020. Mm-hmm. In that document, they recognize that we have a beach access problem. Right. And that's why they're putting this document to record to, um, to say they're putting some regions in place, which mm-hmm. is pure window dressing. Mm-hmm. You see, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I get riled up about these things, you know, because they're very emotional to me, you know, because mm-hmm. we have a lot of unfinished business in this country regarding reparation. You know. yeah. And some people out there, you know, Really, see, like they just joking with her, and we must keep on rolling. Mm. We can't keep on rolling, my Jamaican people. Okay, these are violations of human rights. Mm-hmm. So you, so so let me finish addressing um the, the threat that the, 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 the community faces, and Jamaica yes. faces this threat too. Yes. All right. So apart from the, the, the communication from the representatives of, of Wolf Group Limited and the JCSF, JCSF. The um the, the, the Wolf Group property adjoins um the Caribbean Sea out here. So you cannot get on that beach without crossing over Wolf Group property land. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And access to beach, okay, is land right because we can't fly. Okay? Mm-hmm. We right. can't ask people to stand up um on Mommy Bear Road. And you can't see the beach and go down from the beach. You can't fly. So he regarded that the government of Jamaica and the post police come out and says it is a public space. Mm-hmm. From the high water mark, mm-hmm. you know, to the floor of the sea is a public space. And it is crown land. Yeah. So really, if it's a public space, shouldn't we all have access to that public space? So let me ask you this. Is yes. The land. But how do you get to that public space? Uh, and so what we have here, um, Dr. Taylor is all the issues that we have been talking about in this space regarding access to the beach and the, and, and the fact that if you, the, the, beach, the Beach Control Act allows, it is legal for the owner of the property to lock off the property from, from the public to access the public beach. So that if you can access the beach another way, um, obviously, it is a public beach if it's not sold because they're also selling beaches. But if the beach is not sold, which is what Robert Morgan seemed to be saying, it is smoke and mirrors, and there is no access to the beach but, but through um, land that, was, that has been sold to a private interest, and that private interest deter- decides to lock off access, then they are within their right to do so, which is a point that you have raised in this space up to the last time we spoke as a problematic um, issue. Now, what, so is, is, what I outlined just now, is that the problem that we're facing with Bob Marley Beach? Absolutely. We are facing that problem. And that is one of the clear um, reported laws in the, um, in the Beach Control Act that says um, anyone who has a property that adjoins the ocean, all right, a full benefit, okay, of that space for him and his guests um, to enjoy and do whatever they want to do. And there are there are so many examples of this, okay. I would ask, you know, um, Mr. Robert Nestor Morgan, very close to Robert Nestor Marley, mm-hmm. I would ask really. Um, the Honorable Andrew Holiness to get out of a car right right at Windsor right as you pass Rockborough Beach in St. Andrea and everyone knows get out of that car it's, it's, it's Heroes Weekend in Jamaica mm-hmm. walk okay with average ordinary Jamaicans from that space 
right into Ochoia mm-hmm. and tell me mm-hmm. how many easement points, how many access points you can actually just make a left turn and walk onto the beach in Jamaica. All right? There is absolutely none. So they're saying that this space, the beach is owned by the Crown, public space, and it belongs to the government, but no Jamaican can make a left between Windsor and um, the Ronald Spear and enter onto the ocean. Ask my fellow um, 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 citizens from Steertown mm-hmm. who live in um, um, the extended part of Steertown in Mamie Bay. Mm-hmm. Walk out onto the main road and just keep walking um, perpendicular and mm-hmm. tell me if they can walk onto the beach. They can't because there are no um, easement points. Mm-hmm. So this is a land right question. Yes. They don't have any rights to traverse over the land to enter onto the beach. This is a cross and this not only happens to private property mm-hmm. because the UDC owns um, a property that is just east of Old Fort Bay that stretches what we call Brownlow Beach into Laughing Waters, mm-hmm. you know, into Pearly Beach, mm-hmm. into Little Dunce River, exactly. into Portugal. And they have locked that fence and not even Jamaicans can go on it. Mm-hmm. So, so it's land. The mm-hmm. land is locked. Mm-hmm. And we cannot get over the land. And the last time I checked, I don't know any Jamaicans who can fly. Mm-hmm. But they make so, they are, these people are crazy. Yes. I don't know how they can be a face, look at Jamaicans, and is saying that this is misinformation. Yes. One person quoted, I mean, um, this... Uh, this is a public thing and, and, and nationwide. Mm-hmm. When when will we stop being outraged by things one mischievous or ill-informed person decide to post on social media? Mm-hmm. There is zero plan to restrict access access to Bob Marley Beach. There is not even a proposal for that to happen. Yes, I, I, that yes, that's, that's that ig- right. So, so that's a level of that's a level of elite ignorance. There is an elitism, classes, um, tribalist ignorance in Jamaica that will make your skin crawl. Uh, what what we need now is for Jamaican people to be upset enough to understand. Because remember, you know, we have been talking about this is in this space for twenty five years, and and the more we talk, and the more we lose beaches. So here's the thing. But we're talking about the North Coast heading into into West. And it grad- we saw it creeping all the way to Montego Bay and then now into Negril. We're having a similar situation in Negril. But look at the other side. We always say that this is going to be happening from Moran Point to Negril Point. Now they have announced the development of St. Thomas. We, saw, we have seen the plans, um, massive, um, ambitious plans. If... Um, they do this, brilliant, for St. Thomas uh, on the face of it. So all that development that is coming to St. Thomas means that people are about to lose their land. We have one politician um, allegedly owning five, um, how much acres? as 5,000 or something. How much acres? I might be misquoting. But yeah, we... Yeah, 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 you're mentioning um, Old Terra. Right. So we have people. So, so, so here we have St. Thomas now. Uh, and obviously this beach, uh, because we understand it's a hotel that is going to be built there. Am I right? Do you know? Yeah, the, the, the whole um, east, south coast um, um, there is, uh, east coast is going to um, be slated for development. And I want to make one, one, one point here as you, um, you know, um, develop the, the next question, um, um, Sister Kambu. Mm-hmm. The private property owner do not need any permission, okay, from the government to restrict, um, you know, access to the space. They don't need it, all right? You, if you bought a, buy a piece of land and you, your surveyor determine where your borders are, you don't go seek permission from the government to run your wire fence. Mm-hmm. You run your wire fence and you shut it down. That's what they do, practically. And anybody... Um, dispute that with me right now um, and call and tell me I'm a madman. Please do so. Mm-hmm. so when mm-hmm. you, and I want to reinforce it again as you clearly outlined it. You have a property that adjoins the Caribbean Sea. You can actually, you can within your legal right, fence it up and don't let no one over it. And I'll give you some more. The act itself 
also defined in there that any behavior, any ownership, anything that you used to do with the land adjoined to the ocean, so meaning that if you, you, you had a wire fence that run into the sea, if you had a pier that runs into the sea, if you had an establishment that not only on the beach, you know, that, but run into the sea, before the act came into the effect in 1956, nothing in the act will change that. And I want to let you in, um, um, my Jamaican people, that there are properties in Jamaica whose borders are in the sea. And as a result, they control even that which the government is calling public space. That is in the Beach Control Act of 1956. Hold on this then. group limited oh. owns around three pieces of land. Two of them are joined to hold, the hold, hold a point. Let me take a quick and break. Hold, hold a point. I'm so sorry to, to cut in here, but I have to do take a break. So no hold a point for me. Only Optical Elements has the latest technology lenses and frames to suit your taste and budget. Visit us at 67 Halfway Tree Road, online at opticalelementsja.com or call 929-8284. Optical Elements, vision in style. The time by Optical Elements is... Two minutes now after 8 o'clock, you're inside of the Africa Forum. It is Running Africa and Dr. Devon Taylor is on the phone lines. He's a scientist, you know, but he's also the founder director of JABEM. They're looking at um, the Beach uh, uh, um, Control Act in Jamaica, looking at uh, the lack of access to the... And, and the fact that we're losing access to, to the coastline, to the sea, to the beach, to land, etc., etc. And now uh, have taken on the next um, loss that we are about to suffer here in Jamaica, which is the loss of access to the Bob Marley Beach, no matter what they tell you. This is about to happen. It's smoke and mirrors. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, my brother. Yes, yes. So, um, what I was saying is that the app also, you know, um, protects and gives you the right. You know, I mean, to if you if if, if you actually um, if your boundaries at ex- um, you know reached into the sea before the act came in, into effect, then um, nothing in the act shall change that. Mm-hmm. So there are one portion of um, um of, of the property that we're talking about um in in the Bull Bay area that the region that part of that property when you look at the um surveying uh, map seems to also not only adjoin um you know um the ocean but overstep into the water all right so even that public space that they're talking about which is um, you know, up to that high water mark, and I want to, I want to, I want to explain what that high water mark is, because I mean, I think, I think most Jamaicans don't know it. So let's break it down here. So I mean, when you get up in the morning, if you um, walk to the beach, if you can access it, you know, you, you may be at some low tide, and you see the water rushes in, and then it rushes back out. Where the water rushes in and stop, that is the high water mark. You might go to the, um, you know, the beach um, in, you know, mid-afternoon, and that um, high water mark shifts a, a bit because the tide picks up and the wave rushes in, and it pushes up a little bit more on the shore. Now that's mm-hmm. the high water mark. That mm-hmm. span there in Jamaica is a very thin, it's very small. It's mm-hmm. around five to six feet. Mm-hmm. So that five to six feet plus move out um, into the floor of the sea is really what is defined as crown land, all right? The back shore, which is the nice sandy area where, you know, you know sand dunes are, vegetation are, you know, I mean, where many um, life forms live, crabs, where turkey lay their eggs, where birds lay their eggs, that whole ecosystem back there, which is classically defined as the beach, mm-hmm. okay, is not public property as defined by the Beach Control Act of 1956. So you don't have no right to it. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I will repeat, mm-hmm. that component that is beyond the high water mark, moving to the land, adjoining to the land, does not, you don't, it's not public space. So you do not have any right to it. Okay? All right. So, he- so yes. Yes, go ahead. And, and I, and I, I want to qualify to say, the government of Jamaica is in the business of, of granting lease. 
and you could check with NEPA that there are more than 290 leases, okay, that leases the high water mark out to the floor of the sea, which restrict also the use of Jamaica, uh, use of the space by Jamaican. So there are so many mechanism components within the beach control uh, because it defines that the government can issue leases. Mm-hmm. So every single hotel beach, guest house beach, all of these across Jamaica have leases, mm-hmm. and these leases exclude you. Some of these leases of you know public beaches, let's say Porto Seco or um, you know um, Duns River. Um, you know, um, um, you know, Doctors Cove. Mm-hmm. They have these leases that you know. I mean, it's a it's a it's a public paid beat, so you can pay and go in there. But there are many others which are guest houses and hotels and private property that have leases that exclude you. So majority of the Jamaican coastline, which is sandy, and it's only around 150 miles. So the, I think there's around 450 something miles of coast that mm-hmm. Jamaica have. And about 150 is sandy. Majority mm-hmm. of that is licensed. And therefore, the whole thing that is, I, I tell you, these people need to just come clean mm-hmm. and break it down for the people yes. so the people understand that really this whole public space that they're defining, one, we can't get to it because yes. we have no land rights. So that land rights need to be reformed in Jamaica. We see the whole thing that's busting up and, and, and happening across the island right now. The people need to understand it. This is not a me or nothing. Mm-hmm. This is us. This is okay? us. And, and, and internal reparations to deal with this issue because... There uh, is, there uh, is, there is uh, an uh, internal reparations, and I keep saying desk for these things because that's what they're all turning out to be, but there is an internal reparations desk at the National Council on reparations in Jamaica. And uh, it, it, so, so when you talk about internal reparations, the, the, whoever is heading that desk, who's a, or, or, or Minister Grange, it's you again, you know, because you are the head of the NCR. And, and we must have this conversation, internal reparations, the, the access and lack of access and denial of access to land and beach falls right in internal reparations. But let me ask you this quickly, um, Devon, because um, there was a protest action on a fr- on Thursday, was it on Thursday? Uh, there's uh, all there's Friday. Also, on Friday. Friday. Um, what Jabem has done also is to engage an attorney um, who filed for an injunction to stop the the um, the demolition of of the people's um, structures on the beaches and and the eviction of people um, who are on the beach right now, the brethren and sisters who are on the beach. Um, can you tell us what is the latest with this? Yes. So, um, Dr. Marcus Duff, you know, I mean, you know, you know, what, what, what an awesome, capable attorney. I mean, yes. he's very steep um, in in understanding um, um, this issue. Highly. Um, you know, keep of the intellectual yes. individual has yes. really, um, you know, tremendously um, impact and change this trajectory. Wow. And so um, he filed an injunction in the court. Um, he has not um, had an audience, um, you know, with the judge, and he's going back there in the week um, to really um, get that done. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Dr. Goff um, has also, um, you know, is going to file prescriptive, um, 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 file under the prescriptive act, to protect the space in perpetuity, not only for um, the folks that are living in the space, but for the entire Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And I want to explain what that law uh, is um, in a minute, but um, um, the action, um, and of course, and of course, the numerous Jamaicans uh, who came out, you know, in solidarity to protect this space, right? Averted um, any demolition and pushed back um, at that. Okay, so so regardless of what Robert Morgan is saying, the police had said to the people on the beach, "You have to come off by Friday," and they had also told them they're going to be evicted if they don't come off. And they also told them there was going to be demolition. So the the act of Jabem uh, and through its attorney. And the demonstrators, the protesters who stood up in front of that space and say no, no way at all, is what really stopped that from happening, regardless of what the JLP government is telling you today. Yes, go ahead, Devon. Absolutely. 
And, you know, today there's also another day of holding steadfast in the space. So we're asking ones and ones to come out and support the families um, in the space. That is and today? I, I that's today? That is today. Right. Yes. So so you say... The day of holding steadfast is happening there. What time? Right? What so, time? you know, go out. It's what? just an event to show solidarity, mm-hmm. not only with Rastafari, but, you know, with um, your understanding that your rights need to be um, enshrined and protected in law. All right, and then on Monday mm-hmm. there is a day of get up stand up. Mm-hmm. All right, also just you know another advocacy day, another day to stand with the family to say that we understand and for mm-hmm. Jamaican to speak with one voice mm-hmm. that we the people demand that our ecological heritage and the access there up to it is preserved mm-hmm. and enshrined, and any legislation that was written before. We become so empowered before we transcend from slavery mm-hmm. needs to go. Mm-hmm. That legislation, I'm asking you, and I'm telling you, when that next election comes around, you must vote on the issue. Mm-hmm. Vote on the issue. Vote from, on the issue that, some, that someone is not going to block you from accessing your ecological heritage. And my people, I'm telling you, this is not a position tourism enterprise. It is not. So as they're going to package it to you and say that this is not good for tourism, mm-hmm. what madness. Mm-hmm. Look across the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Just go to Barbados. Mm-hmm. Wide open products. You walk so many easements on those beaches there. Mm-hmm. I have been there. You walk onto the beaches. No problem at all. Yes, yes. You go to Cuba. Cuba is the same thing. You go yes. to Cuba, mm-hmm. none of these problems. Yes. Listen, in Mexico, there's a federal coastal protection zone mm-hmm. that stipulates that 65 feet above the high water mark is public land, and you cannot really block people. There have been resorts that built in Mexico that violate the rights of the people, and the Mexican government run bulldozer over it and push it down on behalf yes. of the people. That has happened yes. in Thailand. You can't own these land. Pure easement there. I mean, in the state of Oregon, it is written into the Constitution that the people own that space and easement must be there. In Texas, it is written into these things. You go across the world, all of these, you know, touristy places, Australia, all of them, mm-hmm. the space is wide open and locals and tourists mix up and the whole thing nice. Jamaica is a land. And Jamaica is becoming. Jamaica, the narrative around this, Jamaicans cannot use the same beaches as tourists, and the place needs to lock up and shut down, and this private beach concept where we can't go there. You know what I mean? Miracle needs to It is disgusting. And cousins and my friend, them can't walk across the road. Tomorrow, here is there, and them cannot step out of them yard and just enter into the sea. Come on, Mr. Tourist Man, man. Come on, Mr. Big uh, Mongol of all of these things. We will make lots of money. Who open up the space and let the Jamaican people can walk onto the beach freely. And we'll see how certain crime move away. Because part of what is happening is that these kind of settlements are creating ghettos along the corridor. It is wrong. We need to have the land rights. We need the easement. And we're asking the government to be proactive so we can drop back on these things that they're talking about. You know, I mean, government gave, uh, did not give any permission for, for, for you know, the space to be closed up. The government don't need to They find permission. themselves on the, 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 the bottom line is that Robert Morgan, Andrew Holness, um, they find themselves on the wrong side of history. Let me just underline, let, let me reiterate what you just said, underline, underscore some things. One, Today, we are holding space at the Bob Marley Beach. We are inviting you to come to the Bob Marley Beach today where we are holding space. The Bob Marley Beach is representative of every other um, um, beach in a Jamaican access to, 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 to the coastline. Um, if we win one, we can win them all. That's what we thought when we won Winifred Beach. That's why we have to do it differently. That's what we thought when we won Little Duns River. That's why we have to do it differently. So that we're asking you all to come out today and make a whole space at Bob Marley Beach. And then tomorrow, t- tomorrow is called what? Uh, 
the day of stand up, get up, stand up. The day of get up, stand up. Sometimes we feel like we can't do anything, but we have to take a stand even if we're sitting down. Jamaica is becoming a landlocked country. And when we say landlock, we mean we are being locked out of access to the coastline. We might as well did live in a country where there is no river and no sea. Basically what is happening here now, we, we are losing access rapidly, not just to the sea, but we're losing access to the river. I didn't think that I would live to see the day when they um, sell the rivers. But this is what is happening now, that the tourism interests are also buying up the rivers, and here we are. So as Devon Taylor is saying, the matter has to do with land. Devon, I, I'm going to go, but I want to thank you so much. We're going to talk to Jerry Small after this break. Uh, just once again to say, what time? What time tomorrow? What time today and what time yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a wide open day, but I'd say anywhere from noon um, up forward, um, you know, good time to show up both um, today and tomorrow. Right. Um, good time to come out and show your solidarity. Okay. Babu, before you go, I mean, and, 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 and Dr. Small here, just give me, um, let me cut him for your time. Before, um, Can you hold? Let me just take a break. Yeah. All right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. Let me just go straight back to Dr. Devon Taylor. Yes, Devon, you were saying? Yeah, to close out here, all right? I just wanted to read something clearly to the people because I do want everybody to understand this, you know. And I want them to understand that there's a spin to this whole thing, all right? And, um, you know, we need clarity here. Yes. In um, 2017, um, Dr. Carlin Cooper, a fierce advocate for these access rights, wrote an article um, in, in the Gleaner that, you know, I mean, kind of, you know, um, you know uh, asking for, um, you know, address to these problems. And one of the technocrats from the National Environmental Protection Agency, an agency now that sits within the super uh, uh, ministry of the um, office of the prime minister. In that office also the National Land Agency um, sits in that office as well. So even as the government representative came out and saying that they don't know anything, and this ministry, the super ministry, was created to say that they are going to be effective at management so everything can fall within one space, then this may be an indication of some mismanagement because the Environmental Protection Agency and the Land Agency, both of them are in there. And mm -hmm. the National Land Agency is regulated under the Commission of Land, which is also um, you know, um, um, managed by the Property Vesting Act of 1960, which is another colonial um, um, era law. Mm -hmm. You know, one mm -hmm. of the technocrats um, responded, um, and this is um, Peter Knight. In common law, the public has no general right of access to the foreshore or the floor of the sea or, or, or to the beaches. These are, there are no general um, common law rights over the foreshore except to traverse, to pass over it for the purpose of navigation or fishing. This is what is written there. Clearly admitting that the public have no general right. Right. Now, in 2020, when they tried to create this green paper called the Beach Access Management Plan, it was written in that document very clearly. Go read it for yourself. You go on jobm.org site. We have a lot of documents here that you can read. It says, in Jamaica, uh, in Jamaican common law, the public has no general rights of access to the foreshore except to pass over for the purpose of navigation or fishing. Mm -hmm. There is therefore no general right of bathing or to walk along the foreshore except where um, acquired by customs or prescription. Mm -hmm. Nor is there any general right to fish except provided in Section 3 of the Beach Control Act. Mm -hmm. So what they're clearly telling you here, you do not have any general um, you know, unfettered rights to the space. The mm -hmm. only right to the space that you gain is you is through you have to acquire it through the prescription act. Mm -hmm. And what the prescription act basically says, and this is an act that we are going to utilize at the Bob Marley Beach. If you have been using a track, a roadway, um, going onto a beach, and nobody gives you permission, and you have been doing it for twenty years, mm -hmm. you have to go into the courts 
and you have to have the courts recognize that right. But that's the very same. But the very same clause we used for the Winifred Beach, you know, and the Winifred Beach is once again under threat. So, the, so, 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 what can we learn from Winifred Beach? So, what needs to happen in Winifred is that the land title that UDC have for that property, right, needs to be resurveyed and an easement be included on that property title that then in perpetuity forever will recognize the easement as a public access point. So everywhere that there's a beach that you walk onto, all right, there needs to be an easement that you get onto it. This is a progressive um, um, you know, position to take. Yes, yes. It happened across the world where the public truck doctrine is fully alive. Mm-hmm. I want to say, I mean, the lawland area, you know what I mean, right down here in Landovery, which is grounds is going to be broken for a massive hotel complex development there. Lawland, you know what I mean, is a fishing beach, is a building beach mm-hmm. historically. And I can bet you that the government, this government has not been proactive to create on that property title an easement. So our Winifred space now, they keep going back to Winifred because they know that, okay, that it's, it's one in court. I'm asking my good friends who I know very well who stand up and fought, you know what I mean, for, for Winifred. Carla, you know what I mean, you know, Nino, Miss Cynthia, all of the ones them out there demand that UDC resurvey and put that easement on that land title and leave them alone. Because the beach around nine. Last time you okay. see what happened out there, Nepa was out, uh, what them name? Who, Nepa, whoever that was, Jay, te, Tef. Tef out, out there. there trying to take the, take the beach from them. Yes, Listen, I, 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 I was. I mean, <laughs> all this Tef and TP Deco get involved in managing Jamaican beaches. All, 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 how this, uh, this is a sort of private arm of the government involving beach management. It goes Jamaica. back to the and tourism. Saying, it goes beach back. Beach management is a conservation thing. It goes back it to tourism and how tourism is practiced on the island. Mean, Devon, uh, um, we're, we're going to have to pick this up, Devon. We'll have to pick it up. And, yeah, and you know, I hope when you're coming, yeah. just, to, just to say at the same time that we are reminding our uh, uh, listeners, we're reminding Jamaicans, tell your friend, tell a friend to tell a friend. It is important that we take a stand. Sometimes we have to take a stand. We are losing yeah. access. Um, take and a stand today. It's for real. We're not making it up this. Not for real. For once in our life, read. Read the speech control at 56. Go to Jabem. Tons of information is there. You know, I'm talking about it. Make a, 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 a full documentary on the issue on the island. Go watch it. And I'm glad you mentioned him, you know, because when he, when, he, when he published that he was coming here to Jamaica, I, write, I wrote to him personally, you know, to say that when you come, go to the beach and go specifically to Winifred Beach. And I'm very happy. I'm not saying that I, I, he did it because I told him to, but I did write to him and he did respond to say, make this, go, look at what is happening on the island when you come in, especially in Port Antonio, how we're losing access to the beaches. And he did. He's dead now, committed suicide, but um, that documentary still stands. Thank you so much, my brother. The thank you, thank you. Still stands. Yes. Go yes. read writers have also done an article on this, but yes. not only, I mean, for I, I know, I know Jerry Small is, I know Jerry, it. we're going to talk to Jerry in a while. I know he wanted to ask you a question. So what I'm going to do is when I talk to Jerry, I'll have him ask a question and you text me on it, right? You text me on the okay. answer. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Devon. And we're meeting today at at um at, at Bob Marley, Marley Beach. At Bob Marley Beach in yeah. a day of holding set part. And tomorrow to again. All Jamaicans, it's yes. your public space. Tomorrow, get up, stand up, yes. come out, show your support for public beach access right, for actively protecting the space through yes. easement. Thank you. Our ecological heritage show up today. It's a day of advocacy, it's a day yes. of fun. Bring your kids, you know, I mean, your family. Come get your foot in the Caribbean Sea, from the nine black, nice black sun, the beautiful mountains there. I mean, I reach Before out to the them out in a grand spend. Okay, we know how we feel, and we're coming to work with you all. The Virgin Zemota Outpera, we're coming to work with you all. The space around Jamaica is not for sale. We need land rights to protect this space. And we have a really vote on this issue. And we're going to support folks who are serious about reforming these laws. Make Thank you. Clear. Thank you, my brother. 
have to go. Give thanks. Thank you so much, Devon. All right, you know, there is a lot to unpack from what um, Devon just spoke about, what we have talking what we've been talking about for many moons in this space. It's coming to a head. That which we feared is upon us. And um, I'm sorry that the protest actions, the um, interviews, the demonstrations, the articles, the blogs, that somehow we are still being ignored by the government of Jamaica. And this is successive governments. When they're in opposition, they side with us. And then when they become government, we don't see them. And we continue to lose a beach. We continue to lose access. We are being called squatters. Squatting is illegal in Jamaica. You cannot talk about it in the way that you should to make it legal, not squatting, but to get land to people so that people can own land on these so-called crown lands. The Broadcasting Commission has effectively banned any kind of speech that is a protest speech. And I want, I challenge my friend and brother, Cordell Green, on this, I challenge you that you have put out a statement on an issue that you already have regulations for, but then you have added to that. Morning, Jer- morning, Jerry. How are you doing? Morning, uh, Sister Cabo. Yes, give thanks, give thanks. Um, you know, glad to have you online as, as usual and as always. Uh, the situation at the Bob Marley Beach, I think, is um, acute right now, it's urgent. Uh, you should have somebody who's been uh, in in the in the system for a while, who understands what's happening, understand the history of areas like those. Should have some pretty good information regarding the history of the beach itself and, and the area. What can you tell us? Well, um, I, my old man was one of the people in you know, this beach control thing in 1956. Mm-hmm. And he used to tell me about it, but he allowed himself to be used. A lot of our educated people mm-hmm. in pursuing them career and, and, and looking at greater um, objectives, sometimes they allow themselves to be used that them can reach for that for something more useful. But mm-hmm. the fact is that I've been... that Those beaches were the beaches of the people of Kingston. When I was a little boy, there was no hell shot. All of the whole I from Kingston going east, right, to... to tomorrow and be all of those beaches, those are the beaches that the people are kings and all of the poor people, all of the society people, everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, now, do you know, I wanted to ask Devon this before you finish with him. Mm-hmm. Do you know that the member of parliament went to the beach and negotiated with some people and turned some of the people a certain way? And is warning, issuing warning to the rest of the people, especially the people further down the beach there, that they better get out of the way. Are you serious? Yes, the member of parliament. I wonder how Devon never know this. Um, well, we didn't talk about it. I'm wondering what, what what he knows if he's been told. Because when you talk about, uh, well, you you are a media person, so you know what we say on air and what we don't say on air. I know you wouldn't come and on air with this. It is said. Yes. It is said that. Um, it make the people further down or make him know how many more than five generations they are there. Mm-hmm. That when the bus ready for move, them better make sure they're in front of the bus. So this is allegedly, right? We have to say allegedly. We're in the media and it so is... you come to the beach this afternoon today by me? When you live there, come to the beach? No, I have a, I have a funeral. I'm going to try and come on, on, um, on oh, Monday. That, that on Monday. Yeah. There, no, no, IRFM is going to be there. RFM is, going to, RFM is going to be there. As a matter of fact, um, I think they were there for the last one also. But I know that they're, they're, they're expected to be there. there yes. Yesterday afternoon. Yes. By this time, Marcus Goff was just leaving when I, when I mm-hmm. reached him. Mm-hmm. Well, and cool. mm-hmm. and um, I saw Carlin Cooper leaving too. But right. um, it is, the irony is this. That is Bob Marley Beach. The beach was there well established by Rastafari. No, the beach was being built by nature, by life. 
mm-hmm. but Rastafari identify and take care of that beach from in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Ironically, that after that name Bob Marley Beach, Bob Marley wouldn't sing about old pirates. Yes, the rabbi. And so like the merchant ship. By the way, you know, old Pira? Yes. Do you know yes. the right Devon, name? Devon, Devon, Devon just mentioned it. No, what's the right name? Old Pirate. Mm, I wondered when I heard, you know. All you right. So the member so, of parliament over there believe that she inherit that seat from her father. You remember her father was a member of parliament before? Mm-hmm. And you know that all of these political families, the main thing they go into politics for, not to serve, but to find out information. Because when inside, especially when you're on the governing side, Mm-hmm. You have access to information and you know where to go and pick. Yes. Remember Easton Douglas after he even left politics because he was inside there and even before politics there was a town planner and a surveyor and all of these land skills. Mm-hmm. And then when he went into politics and it was a town clerk too, I believe. When he went into politics that made him even more knowledgeable minister mm-hmm. of housing. Mm-hmm. I remember when he came out of politics, his party dropped him back to guide them because he knew a lot of things. And he was the one who was who announced that, you know, the government needs some money. And when he went to the, what, from what he remembered, he went back into the National Housing Trust and, mm-hmm. and he knew that there are some places where we can put our hands on some money over mm-hmm. there and put our hands on some more money over there. And it was him who was one of the main people guide them out to, you know, the both parties have been raping the National Housing Trust money, building house for mm-hmm. money people, mm-hmm. because middle class people and, and going up is money people. Mm-hmm. But they're taking the poor people money out of the National Housing Trust and mm-hmm. building house for money for middle class people, you know, poor people can buy house. Mm-hmm. And that is what the National Housing Trust being using money for, mm-hmm. the poor people money for though. Mm-hmm. But similarly, so, yes. members of parliament, whether them is senator appointed or whether them is elected, the main thing them going to politics for is to get access to information, especially about land and sea. Those are the two main things. Mm-hmm. Land so, and so, 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 and Jerry, so, Jerry, from what I hear you saying, and you were out there yesterday, and I know you've been talking to the people, um, this there's there's another element to this where, on the one hand, we have people like Robert Morgan saying that He's flabbed. He's flabbed. Robert, Robert Nesta Morgan. Not, not Robert Nesta Marley. <laughs> saying Morgan that the Morgan saying that he's flabbergasted that um, there's this this hoopla about um, the people are going to be losing access to the beach and him can't find nothing and him look high and low and can't find anything about it. But I know the people have been talking to you as they have been talking to us, and we know that the police has been out there. We know that they the, are using the police, the government, and the investors and the MP and so use the police. What was the police force formed for? The police force was formed to take control of St. Thomas and then the rest of Jamaica. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And what was the purpose right of the police force? Right after, formed right after the six, so, so after if, Paul Bogle. What so was it, the to ensure that there was nothing else like it. Nothing uh, that, else like Bogle and his people mm-hmm. to, to for the first time take the land and the sea of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. That is what the force form for. Yes. And right now the police force out in Bulby and the whole island is being used for the same purpose that when they, they send messages um, to different people, they send messages to MP, they send messages to press secretary, mm-hmm. they send messages to Ministry of Information, they send messages to police. Yes. And, poli- and even the police officer out there came out there to find out where the water supply coming from. Yes in preparation to cut in the water supply, because you know that the water supply, and I think even the electricity of the people out there has been mm-hmm. cut, and also about the water supply. Mm-hmm. So they use the police for it, what it was set up for. Yeah. I heard, it was at Holness the other day, say, one of them the other day, a few days ago, say, the police force is not the same as before. Has now been converted to serve the people of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 yeah, that that is, you know that smoke and mirrors again. So let me ask you something because you you would have a pretty good handle on issues like these. So here we have this situation, which is complex because you just outlined something to us that um, it seems as if the the the, the, the politician 
member of parliament might have also gone on to the beach and might have um, had this conversation, allegedly had this conversation with the people to say, you're going to have to leave one way or the other. Now, um, what, so this is how Jabem is dealing with it. We're doing the protest. We, um, it's gone into court in terms of the injunction through the attorney and so on. Um, looking at it holistically, what else do you think can be done to, to address this matter? No, everything has to be done. But mm-hmm. as, as you know, it has to start step by step. It, all of it has to be step by step. Everything has to be done. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the people of Jamaica have to be enrolled and enlisted. Uh, not all of the people going coming up. Mm-hmm. But there is going to be a critical mass. There already is a critical mass. Remember, no majority has ever done any great thing for any country or any people. It's always a minority, but mm-hmm. a large minority. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. is always a minority, but a large minority, and that is what they call a critical mass. That part of the population which combine together, when it moves, mm-hmm. the rest of the population will move with it, just like oh, when the hope moves. Mm-hmm. The spokes and the radius of the wheel move with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, just like oh, we know in the last election, only 21% of the people of Jamaica support the Labour Party. Mm-hmm. Only 16% of the people support the PNP. Mm-hmm. And the vast majority, roughly two-thirds of the population, demonstrated by refusing to vote. Now, inside that 63% is the critical mass. Yes. It could be half of that three. Um, 63%, it could be even less. The PNP and the GLP together only got 37% of the vote last time. The PNP is in disarray now, probably having less less Mm -hmm. um, support than the 16% it got at the ballot. The GLP now is in disgrace. They are in government and because they have 49 seats, they feel good that the PNP only have 14, but they know, they know that they are in danger. They know that this 21% of them have is nothing. That's why Holness was trying to get Cap Comina Johnson Smith into a high position in the Commonwealth, and that's why he was trying to get England and Boris Johnson and all of them trying to move up into the Commonwealth like Rwanda. Now look at the disgrace in Africa now. Mm-hmm. Rwanda was never a colony of England. Can you remember? <laughs> I know, yes. Never a colony of England, yet the, the government of Rwanda apply mm-hmm. to become a colony of England. Yeah. Apl- and they succeeded in getting into the Commonwealth. Yes. And England gave they were placed them the there. deal. Yes. Eh? They were placed there. They right. were placed there. Yes. England gave them the deal that Cameron mm-hmm. was offering Jamaica a few years ago for yes. the prison. Yes. You know the deal that England gave them? Yeah. Yes, yes. I think England offered them something like a hundred million pounds. Mm-hmm. If they agree that all non-white migrants that reach England, mm-hmm. England will deport them to Rwanda. Rwanda will build, build, build several prison colonies mm-hmm. in Rwanda. You know, yes, Australia concentration camps colonies. like that, 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 like um, in like like, like we see in, and it's in Israel now too. Those those are in Israel yes, for black people. Even, see me? Even mm-hmm. the great white country Australia yes. start out as a prison colony, so they yes. know what they are doing. Yes. So Rwanda agreed to, to build several prison colonies, take all non-white um, refugees that England sent out to them mm-hmm. and get and get more money. Every set of them that come and get more money. Mm-hmm. And they get um, something like 100 million pounds to start. Mm-hmm. Now, if it, it does the same kind of status that wholeness and the GLP is seeking for Jamaica to move up into the, colon, in, in the Commonwealth mm-hmm. to the status of Rwanda. Remember, it's Rwanda even the yes. election that was being rigged. It was in Rwanda that meeting was being held. You know? mm-hmm. Elections was to be rigged for Kumina mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to become, um, Kamina. to become, uh, you know, the Secretary General for the Queen. Yes. No, it was for the Queen you know, and the Crown. Yes, so of course. And them mm-hmm. trying to move because they they are puppets of both America and England and are shameless. They serve mm-hmm. the people. They serve, not even the people. The people of America and England are not served by the government of America and England. You know? The people of England, um, remember just a few days ago, the first black finance minister for England was used. Yes, abused, abolish, used and abused, abolish devalued and, and discarded. To abolish the tax against the rich people. Yes. And relieve the rich people, the super rich. 
Yes. And to collect the tax from the poor instead. But they just did that to show a signal to the super rich. It was a test. Way. It was a test, yes. And they used them. Yeah. They used them yeah. to do that. They know that, they know that to that. Yes, and they, then he has been they, devalued in the space and then discarded. Yes, and to yeah. show that no black person. Yeah. To show that, yes, we are using mm. black people and we, we are respect black people. Yes, yes. At the same time, in two days, they can say, well, this was a mistake. You know, black mm. person can't really hold on responsibility. Because there's a danger for the non white people. Yes. Take over the two party in England and a non white person like Obama become prime minister yes, in England. Which is so not. I'm, I'm going to have a cut it, Jerry. Um, so, and this is a conversation that I really want to continue just, but I have a few more interviews lined up and thank you so much. Um, you're going to be out there today. Can you ask what else we have to do? Mm-hmm. The first step is, to, as we have done, to, to help them in the, the demonstration. And after that, to rally the people of Jamaica, to support the rest of the people of Jamaica, mm-hmm. and to get the political momentum outside of the PNP and the JLP going. Yes. Because there's a critical mass out there bigger than the JLP and the PNP. And the time has I agree with you. PNP time coming on. And a PNP time come. And the African people and the rest of the people, the, all of the races, because Jamaica symbolized to them through Rastafari and through other things that Jamaica is one of the places that the minorities in Jamaica will also move along with the Af- African min- majority. So there's a time come now to take step by step until the critical mass politically and economically, you have to get together economically too, because you can't fly without fuel. Mm-hmm. So you know it cannot stop until the political revolution in Jamaica. Not, not violent revolution, no political revolution in mm-hmm. Jamaica it is already long on the way yes. and the police force may no longer be used like in a Paul Bogle time. Mm-hmm. And, and, time and, and as you talk Jamaica, about Paul Bogle time, we are in the middle of Paul Bogle time now, aren't we? Yes, it Which is. is the exact time. Yes, Thank you. When you hear, when you hear mm-hmm. holiness, use the word criminal like when you use out a rich man. What do you play, say? Um, out a, out a, out a, Bernard Lund? Out of Bernard Lodge, mm, mm. the language that they used to signal to the police that go and kill. Exactly. Criminal. Yes, yes. And they know, they know it was not criminal. No. Yes. They, they know that it's gangsters related to their party and their party. It's a dog whistle. This, but, but it's a dog whistle. But not just to the police, the also, to, the, also to, to, to decent people, you know, because we yes, are, we, yes. we, it's, it, it is like Pavlov's dog. We just yes. they, they know the condition us that when we hear that, we want to kill, kill them all. And, they and they, never send yeah. the police out there to show yeah. it. The arm, um, the clansman people who sell the gun. They, they, they sell them out there to intimidate and shoot the people who buy the land, ordinary Jamaica, yes. and the people who build the house, not the gangster. Travis. Criminalize the householders yes. and the buyers of land who are land staff. And he, and, oh. he, and he did it deliberately to back up our strong use of the word criminal. Yes. And the next day, he used the word criminal about 11 to 15 times to mm-hmm. say, him deliberately use a word and him not backing up. But yeah. he know that he's in trouble. Not only me. He's minor, you know. These oh. boys are minor. Yeah. Jerry, thank you so much. We're good through we're good through easy, you know, because it is bigger than us. Um so Devon is responding to Jerry's question. He says, Yes, I am aware of the presence of the minister in this space, informing the folks, alleging that they will have to leave and harassing the people. We are just being prudent to fully verify his statement beyond a shadow of a doubt. His presence on the beach in the space is fully validated. We just want fully valid we just want to fully validate what he said exactly. All right, so um, you see, as I said before, we are go through calm and easy. Brethren sent me a text this morning at Minister 6 o'clock, just before I came on air. And I saw it, you know, and I read it. And it says, very good morning. Be soft and cool like water, so you can adjust anywhere in life. Be hard and attractive like a diamond, so no one can play with your emotions. You know, I read it, you know, and, and, and the soft and cool like water is almost like a, an ancestral message that this morning just be soft and cool like water <laughs> so thank you my friend for sending this I want to say a, good, a special good morning to the Campbell family in Hopewell Marlborough in St. Mary uh, who lost Rowan Campbell brother the funeral service was yesterday I was there um, just want to say enough love to Paulette 
Minette Campbell, Paulette, my sister, I feel you, um, feel your grief, it is palpable. I just want to send you a virtual hug again. We hugged yesterday and I just want to send you a virtual hug again to Helena, to Sean, Shirley, Paris, the rest of the family, to the children, Rowan Jr., and the children of um, Paulette, my brother. Sad times. Sad times. But my deepest condolences to you, Paulette, to the entire Campbell family, to the Ramses, to the church, the Marlborough Pentecostal Church family, and to the community of Marlborough in St. Mary. My deepest condolences are to the family. It was good to see the family, you know, sometimes when you go to a funeral, you um, meet your classmates from primary school and infant school and high school and so on. So on one hand, it was good to commensurate with the family, you know. Um, but it was a sad occasion, and sometimes we get together only on these sad occasions. But once again, our condolences from our families to your family. I'm just trying to get my next guest online, and uh, that's not happening right now, but we are trying to get through to my next guest. The a document has been sent out by Sosa Crew. And uh, trying to get Ras Wayne on the phone lines. Uh, we're not getting through to you, Ras Wayne. If anybody knows how to contact Ras Wayne. All right, so. Uh oh. Uh, I was going to read the document. Oh, why do I keep losing this document? <laughs> All right, so I've opened it. I keep losing it. I'm having a problem with my phone, not opening the documents in the way that they should. Uh, so I'm trying to read this document from Sosaku. Um, from where? Let me take a break and come back. All right. It is Running African. Thank you so much for joining. Going to be going live again to... Live again to Moortown, where Roger is standing by. And I know Dwight is gone to church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And we're also trying to get Donisha Prendergast online, uh, who has written to the Minister of Culture. I want to talk to her about that later. All right, so I can, in collaboration with Temple of Inner Peace, presents Herbology Meets Woodsology Safe Soil Jamaica campaign to be staged at the Inner Peace Retreat. Come and learn how to save soil, save self, and save soul. Special guest, Dr. Ajamu Ngwawa. Nagwa. I hope I got that right. Um, I'll try and pronounce his name right now. Nangwa, Nangwaya. On October 17, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Mount Airy, Westcliff Estate in Negril. I should be talking to Isis about this. Right, let me give Isis a call. On the phone to have a quick chat about this. Is this Donisha? Donisha? Hi, Hey, greetings, my sister. How are you doing? Donisha Prendergast on the line. I am good. I'm good. I'm here in mommy mode in my beautiful Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, boy. Good to hear you. Good to know that you're there. Um, I know that you have written to the Minister of Culture, I'm just trying to um, bring up the document, um, re the uh, Pinnacle and Leonard Howell. As I try to find the document, um, tell us why Why did you write to the Minister at this time, Donisha? Well, just to give you some context, it was actually a letter written to the Prime Minister. Okay. The, the Minister of Culture was cc Okay, as okay. Well as the leader of the opposition. Mm -hmm. I read mm -hmm. the letter in full to all three parties on the occasion of my grandfather's birthday while we were launching the Rita Marley exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, all the media were there. However, I told the media to turn off their cameras 
because it was my media moment. Mm-hmm. This was me as a Jamaican citizen, a national, reaching out to Babsy, Andrew, and Mark as fellow humans who have witnessed the persecution of Rastafari and now have been placed in a position to R-I-G-H-T, the mm-hmm. history, mm-hmm. not just W-R-I-T, mm-hmm. in the history mm-hmm. um, for a photo, yeah. you know? So this was me giving a suggestion as to how it is we could move forward with the resolution of Pinnacle in tangible ways that can benefit the community who are now still struggling the land ownership in this mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. All right, because I'm having difficulty opening the document and I'm not quite sure if it is um, a short one that you can read here, um, can you go through what is bullet point or read if you can, let us know exactly what was said to them? Sure. Um, so, <laughs> on this day, as we celebrate my grandfather's Earth Day and the official opening of the Rita Mile exhibit, I give thanks that we're able to share the same space to recognize the relevance and the capacity of the historic times we're living in. I continue to say we have all inherited a colonial past rife with abuse and power, abuse of power and injustice. And at the heart of it, we are all the same, people fighting to reclaim a stolen history. I continue to say, to share about the Rastafari community and Pinnacle and the reminder that there was 1.5 acres of the 500 acres of land that was allotted to the community for heritage protection. However, that means there's 498.5 acres of land still in dispute. I propose that this difference of land be gifted from the Rastafari, from the Crown land to the Rastafari community as a step towards reparatory justice. Now, understand, Tabu, mm-hmm. that what I'm saying is we don't want the physical land at Pinnacle anymore because mm-hmm. it's already built upon. Mm-hmm. The principle of the land still remains and can still be effective for the community today. Yeah. The suggestion is for the land to be administered by a trust whereby individuals and organizations who represent the best interest of the community can write and have their requests considered by a board. Mm-hmm. Now, when the Prime Minister and Minister Grange came up to Pinnacle during the Occupied Pinnacle campaign in 2014. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying, sorry son, I remember saying to him that even though it it was the PNP who we were actively trying to find resolution for this situation, it is the JLP who is responsible through Alexander Bustamante who has been identified as a national hero of this country. Mm -hmm. So now again, I'm calling upon them Yes. I call upon you not just as Prime Minister and Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports who have the power to heal this deep wound. I'm calling upon you as Andran and Badzi who grew up in Jamaica and witnessed how the residue of colonialism persists. The mm-hmm. Rastafari community is still homeless. This is a potential solution. Together we can write this history. We don't need to destroy the residue and also all of the glory. Mm-hmm. Now we are hosting Prince Ermias in our country for Heritage Week. While we still have all of this to deal with, so everything just sweep under the rug. Mm-hmm. I heard a, I heard, I heard, a, I heard, a, I heard a little one. I, I heard a little one there in the background, um, Donisha. Yeah. Okay, the guitar right there. See the guitar there. Mm-hmm. It is important. Let me just take, take, take the time to say this. Mm-hmm. We cannot continue to witness what is happening and celebrate Jamaica's 60th year of independence while eight years before Jamaica became independent Pinnacle, the first independent nation within this nation was destroyed mm-hmm. and we still have not given like, like any honor to the ancestors and the work that was done for mm-hmm. us to be celebrating in these moments now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the hypocrisy cannot persist with Lennon Howell getting this award, it's great. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how. Donisha, Don, 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 I don't know how great that is. You're talking about the lowest award on the pinnacle. You know, it's, it's I, I, and, 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 but the truth is that if they're not going to honor him with the minimum. Oh, well, don't, don't, well, don't, well, don't honor him then. Leave, leave him, man. Leave him because it, it, it is. It really is a disgrace. 
to say that you're giving that award to Leonard Howell. Don't give him that. Leave it. But you, but you leave it alone. You know? I absolutely agree. The yes. hypocrisy of it is, yes. it's extinct. Of course. Stink. To high hell. So, so that, so that, so that it, it, you, this letter was presented before it um, both read to them and also sent to them. Has there been a response? There hasn't been a response. There hasn't been a response. I mean, as a matter of fact, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the prime minister, he listened. Mm -hmm. But I know Minister Grange was a bit upset and perturbed because what I had basically done is inserted this moment within a moment when it should have been for a photo. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my thing is, Kabu, like, we, we, we are in the position within this lifetime to do the right thing. Let's not just do it for a photo. Exactly. That's charity. When we're building community and we're building mm -hmm. nation, we're actually doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm offended by the prince being here. I'm offended by this national honor, which, which Monty Howell, the eldest son of, of, of Leonard Howell, didn't even get a letter. He was sent an article from mm. the National Gleaner. How disrespectful is that? Yes, it just shows that it's not just for the media. Yes, a lot of this, a lot of this is a is a is a photo op. It is for the media. It is without understanding because uh, for me it is disrespectful um, to 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 say you're honouring someone. But like Leonard Howell, the father of Rastafari here on the island, and to, and, and to do that at the level at which you're doing it. It, is, it would have been better if you didn't touch it at all, leave it as it is. We, we, we even prefer if you have him as a criminal on, on our books more than to do right. what, what you're about to do now. And then also right. you're, you're making a good point. So you're saying that Pinnacle is already um, capture land and there are a lot of squatters. On, well, uh, you know what? It's interesting because people are living on Pinnacle and they get upset when I talk about Pinnacle the way I talk. But if we're going to really talk about squatting, yeah. then we must talk about how lands have been captured and how um, so-called um, upper class, middle class, in between class, upper class, are squatting on the lands that have been ca captured from Rastafari which would have been the pinnacle lands. Um, so this Absolutely. is what is... So that's a squatting situation there, without a doubt, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, you know, and again, for the people who find themselves in the situation now living at pinnacle, it's not their fault because they no. were also misled into no. believing that this was, was, no. was in the land. They have so bought land. They have bought land from those who did not own the land uh, necessarily. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And this is the same exactly. thing that happened at Bernard Lodge, but Bernard Lodge was demolished you understand because we don't have a big uh, <laughs> anyway well, yes one day yes. we're gonna have Monty Howell and you have a conversation because he's willing to talk Monty's in his 80s now and yes. he keeps telling me that Donisha I'm not gonna be here forever please come and sit with me to document this full story we need to get the information out there because people don't understand that there was a nation before a nation that was independent here and let me take away the, the, the brand of Rastafari heritage site for a moment. Mm -hmm. What Pinnacle represented was the first place in Jamaica that ex slaves, formerly enslaved Africans, were able to discover themselves. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was a space for African liberation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Take away Rastafari African and all of the glory yes. and the reggae and all of that. Mm -hmm. Bring mm -hmm. it back to the time that Pinnacle mm -hmm. existed, 1939. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in heritage, we are talking about this, this is our heritage. Um, Danisha, I want to, I want to pick, continue this conversation with you. I want to go um, deeper with this, and um, let us find some time to do that soon, please. Let us talk um, off here and find some time to go deeper in this. We have a short moment this morning, but thank you so much, my sister. You've been on this for a while. You were there occupying Pinnacle. You know, in 2014, I think it was, and 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 what a, what 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 a revolution! Um, but here we are, still fighting for the same things that we were fighting for in 2014, and then some. Thank you so much, my sister. Good work as usual. Yes, my sister. Good night for creating the time and space. And tomorrow. We will be here occupying more space in Canada with this conversation about Pinnacle. Because the conversation doesn't stop just because we're not in Jamaica. Yes. Then, Tell us about it. Please let us know about it. Thanks. All right. And we're occupying um, Bob Marley Beach tomorrow here on the island. And the other day, Monday, here on the island in the middle of Heritage Week. But for us, this is Paul Bogle Week. <laughs> you want to call it Heritage Week, you're good. 
It's Tony got week, Paul Bogle week, Moan Bay week, Letitia Gohegan week. That is what this week is. And if you do not understand the foment and feel the energy of what this week is a spiritual vibe, you know, it's the same spirit that rise up in 1865. This week is the very same spirit that rose up in 1865 when Paul Bogle and Letitia Gohegan and them walked from Stony Gut to Morant Bay. They had a plan. It was war. They were marching for a while. It was going to be war. Read Clinton Hutton. Read Clinton Hutton. Take a break. Uh, back with you inside of the Africa Forum. Yesterday, as I said earlier, marked the 35th anniversary of the assassination of the revolutionary Pan-Africanist Thomas Sankara. We remember Thomas uh, Sankara of Burkina Faso in the space this morning. Just before I go to the phone line to speak with my next guest, um, Kebuka is a word we throw in the space this morning. Kebuka means remember, don't forget. Sankofa, Kebuka. about it, you know, is that we have to start being afraid of looking back. Some of us are too afraid of looking back at what made us what we are, what we've become. We're going to have to look at that before we can move forward. In the words of Moali, Bomani, Barutu, we have to become, we have to look back so that we can determine what made us what we are so we can move toward being what we were before they came. This is serious business. You know, there's something that I've been thinking about and, well, you know, I, I think allowed some time in this space, but there was a big, 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 big cocaine bust at the Boscobel Aerodrome. They call it the Ian Fleming Airport. Um, just a f- two, what, two, three weeks ago? Not even three, probably two weeks ago. And it has all gone silent. It has all gone silent. So who for cocaine was it? A fool for cocaine. Who carried in? Where did I go? We well, yes, it was on its way to Canada. But we don't have no information. We know nothing about it. That's it? That, that's it? Every time there's a big cocaine, cocaine find like this in Jamaica, there's hardly anything after. The plane would have crashed down, so we know anything else about that yet. Who plane, etc., etc., etc. Do we have any information? Boy, my profession is sleeping here in Jamaica. You know. <laughs> um, the newsrooms are sleeping. The newsrooms are sleeping in Jamaica. So the question is, what about the cocaine, that massive cocaine find at Baskerbell, at Ian Fleming, that came right around the time of Tropical Storm Ian? Right? What happened? What's the latest on that? So we're celebrating Heroes Day that's coming up. Please be mindful of the turmoil that is around us. We are mindful of what's happening in our schools, even as we celebrate Heroes Day, especially the turmoil in our schools, man, in the minds of our children and in our general society. Symptomatic, you know, of a people who have been taught to forget, to forget your culture. So, so, so dissolved into the neoliberal agenda, monoculturalism of self annihilation. The neoliberal agenda is what Kwesi Karteng was carrying out there in England, you know. A test, I'm a test, you know. So much happening in our schools, though. So much happening in our schools. We're gonna have to find a way to stop this. I think that we can, I think it's not as difficult as it appears. And so it's up to us. I think it's not so hard like it look. As we go to the phone lines, I think I have online my sister Isis Miller. How are you doing, Isis? Hey, greetings, Kapu Mahakero. Greetings, greetings. I know I was reading the blurb on the event that's coming up, and I said to myself, but why am I reading it and I can call Isis? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to have so much to do, my sister. Yeah, but me check that for safe it banned by the Broadcasting Commission. Hold on. Sing it again over here. <laughs> I know. I heard that interview with you and Cordell, you know. And hey, listen. You know you have some things to say about I have no things to say. I have so much things to say about you, but I'm not taking it. So you. much things to say. <laughs> 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 I interview. And I understand where you're coming from, my sister. It's all about critical thinking and... I understand where you're coming from, but I also have a, have a very, very strong opinion. Yes. More than an opinion. Yes. That it late, bit, and, you know, based on what you said, the regulations were out there and all that already, but it mm-hmm. had to be done this way, Kaboom. No, no, no. We no, no, no. ISIS. It doesn't have... No, 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 no. no. ISIS. Mm-hmm. It don't have to be done. Let me tell you why. Listen, walk with me, let me tell you. You and the media, I mean, I mean, I told you, journalists. Right. You, let me tell you why it didn't have to be done this way. All right, so these regulations and rules and policies are already in place, right? So you can't play gun lyrics, you can't play scamming lyrics, you can't play slack lyrics. You can't. W- hold on, no, let me finish, let me finish. These are NFAPs. All right, so listen, so, 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 so as, a, as a, I've been a program director for years, I'm no longer a program director, so I, you know, I'm not even quite sure what's happening on here that way because I'm not really listening. But, but here's my thing. Um, I, so because the regulations are already on the book, because they are already there, mm-hmm. and nobody never cancel them. Mm-hmm. You don't have to publish so you are gonna ban these things that are already banned. What the Broadcasting Commission has the power to do is to call in the media owners like them used to do back in the day. Yes, call us that. into what them used to call us. Whether it was in the Court Lee Hotel or the, uh, yeah. what the hotel them name, you remember them hotel them. Yeah, man. And we, we would sit and we would sit around some oval tables that big that old wally <laughs> away. And we would talk it through. Now, how you talk it through? You are already breaking the rules. We, we would have already signed off. The media managers, the media owners would have already signed off on all of this. You know, what has happened is yes. a breakdown ah, in, in, in management, in, in, management, in general management. Yes, so, you call yes, the, so you call the media owners in. You say this is critical. This is serious. We see a breakdown in media management regarding all of these kinds of lyrics that are coming out on the air. Your license, you have a deadline, and your license are in jeopardy. We have this mandate from government, because remember, the Broadcasting Commission doesn't have no teeth, you know, so they might forget that mandate at at high level or from the court or wherever. We have this mandate, and we are going to be acting upon it to revoke your licenses or to penalize your licenses if you do not clamp down on this, say, by the but, next but, week. But you know oh, it was, yes, go you ahead. You have to admit, though, and I understand that point, and it yes. would have been, I guess, effective to, to a certain extent. It would be 100% it has, effective. It has no, happened. They've been doing this all along, and it's still. No, happening. they have not been doing it. ISIS, they have not been doing it all along. What has happened is that there is a breakdown in the management of the process. Yes. And yeah, if you ask right. any media manager and any program director and over the years, they'll tell you that every once in a while, you have to revisit that process to ensure that it is properly managed. So there's yes. been a breakdown but, in the management of the process. Okay, and yes, yes, and yes. But it, it wasn't put out, in the, the directive wasn't put out in this particular way for all and sundry to see and hear, like the producer, like the artist, everyone, to make some of them, of course, have come out strongly to say, listen, we don't want a dictatorship, we don't want this. But there's some who are thinking and saying, you know, that is because one tune of them, something tune so it, it wouldn't just be the, no. the media managers and so forth. So it goes out to the public in general. And but no, me, but but the public. That's how is. I think it can become even more effective. No, that's no, how I look at it, it is going to be worse because because all of these songs not coming from the media; they're coming from underground. But it's going to be worse. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so it's not coming from on here. But 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 they're too. So so ISIS. So no, hold on there, ISIS. Don't no no don't don't do that. You know, don't do that because I don't want it to appear as if I'm supporting gun lyrics. No, no. And, man, and all no, of that. I, so I am no, saying... No, nobody says that. I, I, no, it just... That. Right. So, 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 so the position from which we are having a conversation right. is that um, these rules... It's like you're making a law. You're publicizing a law. You're publicizing... You're, you put out something... So like, all right, there's a law in, in the book against um, murder. But there are a lot of murders happening in Jamaica, you know. 
it, 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 so it's like now you put out so the Ministry of of, of Security, National Security, put out uh, uh, a, a, a memo to a policy document to say that effective immediately we are banning murder. That's basically what happens here, you know. All right. So here's the other thing. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. The, the, the part of the document that the Broadcasting Commission put out that talks, that speaks to the songs, the scamming and the gun lyrics and so on, which I am totally against, which I don't think should be played on radio, is one thing. The other part of a document is, what is, is what's important to you, ISIS, and me because of the type of programs that we do. If you read that part, um, so there are, there are three different, uh, um, section one, two, three, and four. If you read the last three lines of section two, it says that, all right, don't glorify any of these songs and any other illegal or criminal activity. Now, what is illegal in, in, in an oppressive society has to be fought against, whether in music or speech. So that when Peter Church say, light up your chalice in a Buckingham yep. Palace. Or, or Bob Marley say, I feel like bombing a church. Or Bob, uh, yes. So, so, and, there are, and, and even chronic so and so. even chronic's capture land. Ah, According yeah. to that Broadcasting Commission document, you probably not, can't play a capture land by chronic, you know. We have to understand what the Broadcasting Commission has done. It is too broad-based. It was done with, without consultation. It, they should have consulted our media managers, but they cannot make it any other illegal or criminal activity because what is legal to de- illegal yeah. to them is oppressive my, my to us. My colleague had, uh, my, well, at, at Roots had that same conversation. He brought up the same the song about Peter Tosh and Bob Marley as well. And he and I had uh, reasonings about that as well. So I totally understand. And I'm going that. beyond the songs, you know, I'm going beyond the songs in the ISIS. I am yeah. also at the point of uh, where... Um, squatting, for example, I need I need some artists for sing some songs now. So not no wrong with um, squatting on Crown land, the whole of it a, a government yes. land, blah blah blah. No, <laughs> that so- if you do that song, I cannot play it. According to this document, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So yeah. we have, I think, we so, have to go beyond the the hype of them band scamming song and them band scam song. Mm-hmm. To what are you really saying to us, Broadcasting Commission? What are you saying to us, Cordell? Because you already band scamming song, your band slackness song, your band gun song, and we agree with that. We signed off on that. The thing is not properly managed. Get it properly managed because these people are operating on license. But as you rightly say, they, you know, uh, of course, in the media houses. There, there is indeed, a to- not all, but some, a total breakdown in management. There's a total breakdown generally across the board, and yeah. so that there is not enough self-regulation. No, once I know media man, I know media owners. You know, once your license threatened, you That's are gonna fix it. Yeah. Right. So this is what it is. I, I, I think that the Broadcasting Commission is, is free speech them coming at. And, and, and I don't care what anybody respond to this to say. But because of what, because you say any other illegal, you know exactly what you're saying. Because Cordell is a lawyer. Cordell yeah. Green is an attorney. He knows yeah. what he's saying. But I know that you come on here for. Now, I saw that uh, brilliant interview <laughs> with Cordell. So much things to say. Yeah, brilliant interview with Cordell, um, but 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 I don't agree with anything. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> no, come on, Cabo. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Something. Say yes, something. I agree. No, it's true. I agree with the part of it that yes, these songs should not be played on air. So that was a good discussion. A brilliant discussion. Yeah, love that discussion. Right, but but I think that um, they have to revisit this, and and it's not too late to call in the media managers and have some levels of consultation. No, right, exactly. You know, exactly. And the media I owners. Think all, all that's yes. going on, the trending of it, and the you know yeah. everything that's happening with it, it needs to be done. Yeah, like yesterday. I would call in yeah. the media owners. I'd call them in. You, and the broadcasting commission has really made to do that. Look here now, ISIS. Yeah. Hold the line. I have to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate Oral Health Month with us at Pure Smiles Jamaica. New patients get 15% off the first visit this October at Pure Smiles Jamaica. Changing lives, transforming smiles, and healing people through dentistry. Unit 12 Barbican Business Center. That's Pure Smiles 15% October special. Your smile awaits you. Call us at 876-667-1694. No 
right. You call net is herbal about your problem yet. Them Sahato low sex drive, erectile dysfunction, fibroids, high blood pressure, diabetes, inflammation, aches and pains, and low energy. Net is herbal tonic is a perfect thing for you. To order, call or WhatsApp 876 491 6267. That's 876 491 6267. They deliver island wide. Visit their website, netisherbaltonic.com, for more information. <laughs> So do I. Like when you take care of yourself with Nettie's Herbal Tonic. Nobody not to take care of kids if you feel. <laughs> feel better naturally. Sunday, October the 16th. It's St. Mary Jerk and Seafood Festival. At Buccaneers Jerk and Juice in Port Maria, St. Mary. 1,500 pre-sold. 2,500 at the gate. 3,500 for backstage passes. Kids, you ride free. And we have a live performance by Ding Dong, Shano, Frisco, Stock Ashley, and Reggie Spice. Sunday, October the 16th, we're going to St. Mary Jerk and Seafood Festival. Brought to you by Archie Events and the Billionaires Club. If it's not jerk or seafood, I don't want it. We're not cooking any Sunday dinner on the 16th. We're going to the festival. 9.32, you're inside of the Africa Forum. It is Running Africa. My sister friend is on the line. Isis, Denise, Isis, Billa. She caught me up to talk about something different. I'm going to take her on properly because she has her own program on Roots FM every morning. Between what time and what time again, Isis? 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah. So check out. And, yeah. um, and so that I saw that and listened to that interview with Cordell Green. And as usual, you are the consummate professional. professional and, and as I said before, um, I, I agree with one fourth of it. But not, that, that was something from saying it was a brilliant interview. <laughs> you. I have to agree to disagree. Yes, you know? yes, and that's yes. That's okay. Yes, that's yes. Okay, of know? course, yeah. yes. But so, I think. Based on who we are, we agree on most things. Of course. Of course, of course. As a matter yes. of fact, I'm sure that you have already been out to Bob Marley Beach or probably heading there today. Yeah, today. So, you know, I have to mm. do a lot of mommy sitting, but yeah, yes, I'm really yes. looking forward to heading out there today. Yes, Absolutely. yes. And I did get a chance to interview um, Marcus Gop twice. Thank you so much for oh, bringing brilliant. us up. Yeah, yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, the listeners were able to get a better understanding as to what's happening out there. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I listened to the interview with you on Devon. Yes. Boy, yes. I uh, And Jerry. Uh, ah, yeah. and Jerry, my sister, my sister. Yeah. We're trying to get Ras Wayne. All right, so I yes. can. So tell us about um, the uh, upcoming Herbology. event, Herbology yes. Meets Rootsology. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if, if you remember, some months ago, um, we were inspired by a program that you did about herbs, and we said we are going to do, uh, we actually did it, a tour mm-hmm. on Herbology Meets Rootsology in terms of trying to educate people about herbs and how to use them. Mm-hmm. And so, um, over time, I have been um, inspired by um, Sad Guru, you know, the Indian mystic, mm-hmm. who was introduced to me by Akova Palmer, who's a part of our team. Mm-hmm. And Sad Guru now has, over 20 odd years, been doing um, this campaign about saving soil. Yes. And of course, more recently, it has been, you know, a lot of countries have been joining up to actually, you know, come on on this campaign to save the soil in their country. Mm-hmm. Because there's a serious, serious problem, as you would know, uh, with soil uh, deteriorating over the years. Mm-hmm. And uh, here in Jamaica, we have that issue as well. Of course, yes. So and especially with the um, the extraction mm-hmm. that's happening. I'm sorry? And especially with the extraction. Right. Whether it's exactly. Mm-hmm. So we decided to, to come together, mm-hmm. myself, Darren and Theo Chambers and Cobra Palmer, mm-hmm. to, to deal with this particular situation of um, cooperating mm-hmm. farmers including um, Kathy Lennon, who's out there in St. Elizabeth, Pitchy Head Farmer, Ganja Farmer, for 25 years. Mm-hmm. But she's saying, being a farmer for all these years, the priority for, for farming is, but the soil has to be stable so we can do anything. Yes. Because when we have good soil, we can't put crops, we can't put food, we can't put guns, we can't put nothing. Mm-hmm. So we have, done, we have incorporated um, different persons who are dealing with um, farming, mm-hmm. including um, sources. I'm sure you're familiar with Source Echo Farms of St. Yes, Thomas. Yes. The place you need to visit is beautiful out there. They're doing great work with organic farming and, and so forth. Mm-hmm. So t- today, at least tomorrow, Temple of Inner Peace that is owned by um, Theo and Sharon Chambers mm-hmm. is a beautiful space over there in the grill, which you need to come to Kabul. We'll just I, there I for know. You. Did, well, yeah, listen. You're invited <laughs> over and over again. But, Good morning, Muta. Muta, may I go to call you? You should just say a while ago, but Muta has been there before you. Go on, listen, <laughs> may, may, may make sure I tell Muta what you just said. <laughs> and Amber, both of them have been there. <laughs> I love this space. 
Anytime I've got Negril, I'll, 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 I'll yes, check it. Yeah. Because, um, it doesn't have to be an event. It's an open space. Sharon yes. and Pia would gladly, you know, have you there. Yes, yes. So as of tomorrow, um, we're having uh, a nice gathering there between 11 Mm -hmm. A.M. and 2 p.m. It's in the grill, and mm -hmm. I don't have the flyer in front of me, Kabu, but it, it, well, it, it says, it says, um, right, I right. don't have the flyer, but I have the, oh, yeah, I have a flyer. Um, what yes. am I looking for? The phone number, because All right, uh, so I get direction. 876-275-3169. Or 876-310-6612. So those are the numbers to call. Yeah. Um, for so so it'll be good if you can come and spend the day with us tomorrow. Uh, we have an official guest speaker who was an academic and has now gone into full-fledged farming mm -hmm. and knows a lot about the soil and um, is going to speak, you know, to this situation that we have. Uh, yes. That is, if we don't see with it now, we mm -hmm. might have to speak problems in the future. That's like for the beach situation. That's what's yes. happening with our land. Of course. You know, it's uh, weird. We have to be less proactive. It all ties you know, back like, to the land. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we yes. need to be more active yes. in terms of um, some of these situations. Yeah, less reactive. So, next week, Sunday, we'll be heading to Picky Farms in St. Elizabeth at mm -hmm. a, another farm mm -hmm. there on, on the 30th. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully on the 23rd, we should be going to Stores Echo Farms as well. So all it's right. a continuation of going to farms. All right. Time. To, to definitely deal with the soil and I must commend you with, I right? must commend you on it it sounds really good I like the idea of it yes. say the soil um, brilliant yes. initiative and yes. um, whenever I can pick up with you on a farm I'll try and do that thank you so much but just so our listeners yeah. know October 17 that's going to be in um, right that's tomorrow that's going to be at Temple Mount of, Temple of Inner Peace alright yeah. okay and just one more thing before I go that we're also affiliated with the um, forestry department because we're getting seasons there that we're going to take to really the farm as well Wicked, and we're also yeah. involved in their tree planting All um, right. food brilliant brilliant yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much, my sister. And we'll talk again day. about the Broadcasting Commission and all of that. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, thank you, okay. thank you. Hi, <laughs> sister, my sister friend. All right, IRFM now brings you a live link. Okay, a live link from the Moortown Nana Day celebrations happening at Moortown Primary School, Moortown Portland, and Roger Hasfall is in the area. Roger, are you there? Yes, good morning to you, Kabu. You are loud and clear, my brother. How things in more town? Well, I'm so happy I'm loud and clear because, you know, this is kind of deep up in the mountains. <laughs> I don't know. We're deep up in the mountains and we are this clear. That means it is very, very, very critical and important that we're going to spread the message across. See? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm a favorite mountains up to United, you know. I love the mountains, you know. Yeah, man. For yeah. Real. I know where I'm at right now. I am at where? the shrine of uh, yes. Queen... Yes, uh, yeah, but Roger, do you remember that that it's it was in um, collaboration with um, Professor Verine Shepherd and yes. at, when she was at the um, Jamaica National Heritage Trust and IRFM that that's uh, we put up that shrine there. Eh? Yeah, man. Well, I'm happy. Yes, and I'm yes, happy. Yes, I'm happy. Yes, yes. Yeah, man. I'm happy to be yeah. here and be part of the continuation. Brilliant, brilliant. Seeing, All seeing. right. So, how are things up there? Well, um, things have just started. You know, it's a two-day event, mm -hmm. and uh, today it will be mostly. I gather seminars and uh, so on and um, you know coming up shortly there will be a welcome uh, ceremony mm -hmm. um, from Colonel Wallace Sterling of course he's right here beside us we heard him this morning on our way down uh, mm -hmm. we're just gonna get on, uh, some more updates as to the actual day activities here today Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, to, to, of course, I said today is most like seminars and Zoom links, and of course, there will be teaching of languages and so on, and tomorrow is also the big celebration. So things actually have kick-started here. And uh, um, this privilege, as I said, to stand right here at the shrine, it says, Nanny of the Maroons, National Hero of Jamaica, beneath this place known as Bump Grave, lies the body of Nanny the indomitable and skilled Chief tennis of the Winward Maroons who founded this town. Yeah, man, I feel privileged to be here today. But I lie. Colonel, how you doing, man? Welcome. We heard it this morning. And, um, yeah, we heard it this morning. But, I mean, can you just provide us, Colonel Wallace Spearman, the Colonel of the Moortown Maroons, uh, as to the day activities, what will unfold today, basically? All right. Um, let me first say Aquaba. Welcome. Aquaba Abakwa River. Welcome to Moortown. 
Um, it's our pleasure to have you with us today. I Ephraim team broadcasting from Bumgrave, the home of our ancestors, the place where Grand Nani was laid to rest. So for us, it is a very important occasion today. So what we want to do today is we are focusing on the language of our ancestors. We know that our ancestors came from different places in Africa. Mm -hmm. They did not come from just one particular tribe. But when they came together, they decided that they were going to refer to themselves as Cromanti. Mm -hmm. And it's not Cromanti as depicting the Cromanti people in Ghana. It is Cromanti as depicting the fort of Cromanti, which where they were, mm -hmm. they were shipped out. Mm -hmm. So irrespective of... Come on, yeah, yeah. continue. Irres irrespective of where they came from, they they use that as a unifying force. So the language, they refer to it as a Cromanti language. The dance, the songs, is referred to as a Cromanti. The drums we make refer to them as Cromanti drums. But it must, it is fair to say that within this language group, which is taken from different African tribes, that the Akan-speaking people, the three languages, mm -hmm. really dominated. So most of the words that you hear mm -hmm. and the terminology has to do with it. And then they have, you know, what we consider plantation influence, that mm -hmm. you mean you know that you know the english language comes into into it but there was a distinction between speaking the Cromanti and cutting country so when back then in the days when somebody would say they are cutting country they mean they were speaking the tree in an undiluted way mm -hmm. there was no english influence it was just the way they would have spoken when they were in the motherland africa yeah so today we want to ensure that the children learn something mm -hmm. and if they don't learn it is host the elders who has to be blamed because if we don't teach them it then there is no way they are going to learn it mm -hmm. and in in order we did something in the past with you know a project with with unesco but we still want to follow that up now because we did a lot of um audio and visual recordings right. of the elders who, right. who we consider you know the, the persons who are the keepers yeah, of the story so what we do then is something that you know we are archiving in terms of like so we did copies of it for basically like with the right. ACIJ mm -hmm. and we have copies here in the community because things like that you have to make sure you have them at in more than one location yeah. for safety you know so we want to start you know with a new drive to say okay how can we get this language to be taught in the school we can teach it in the school right. to the school children and to young persons around the community mm -hmm. because back in the days to be honest with you all four parents use this language as a kind of secret language it, 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 you are not supposed to have spoken it to anybody except another maroon all right colonel here we know yeah. we have yeah. some more broadcast today to do and we're gonna continue elaborate on that so for all the persons listening right now the colonel just give you a sneak preview as to this whole language thing we really are come from out of Africa, right here. And, um, you know, tomorrow, just a quick uh, preview of what will be happening tomorrow as well. So, so tomorrow we're going to be right here mm -hmm. at this very same spot. Yeah. And we'll have all the heads of the various Maroon communities are going to be here. Mm -hmm. And other dignitaries, persons that are, were invited, persons mm -hmm. person from academia and mm -hmm. all over, you know. And then we normally, we start at, tomorrow we'll be starting at 11. Yes. And all of these things will be broadcast via Zoom as well, right? Yes. And we, we should have live streaming tomorrow. The Zoom link, you, yes. you, you have it here with you, or I, I further down, we'll tell, have, we'll tell no, the people. The Zoom link for tomorrow, I mm -hmm. have it here with me, but I never put it on the programs that I send out to persons. Okay. Because I did not want them to continue. All right, you can not tell us the Zoom link No, so, so yeah. people can start, um, you know, set up them computer and them telephone and them smartphone and them things there, you know, because... You know, I mean, people will be very much intrigued as to what will be happening here in Moortown over the next two days. Okay, so, so, yeah. so let me see if my eyes are clear by now. Yeah, yeah, man. So it goes, so it goes. So we're standing, as we say, at the bomb grave. So this, we're, this okay, Zoom you ready? link is, without, without my glasses, is 829-566-7646. All right, I can repeat it again without your glasses. <laughs> Who, so who just run, go catch them pen and them pencil. Yeah, okay, so it's 829-5661-7646. All right. So, so what we're going to do, mm -hmm. we're going to send it back to the persons that have this program in their position. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
later on today because since this start we didn't want person to try to get to confuse them yeah man we understand that right. but we know people will want to join in yes. and it's not a, it's not a private thing no, no, per se pri- so yeah thing. all right Any and everybody's free to join all right all right colonel wallace want to thank you very much mm-hmm. for hosting us today and tomorrow mm-hmm. and um uh, we'll have much more reports throughout the course of the day right here from morton across from morton primary school right at the bomb grave yeah, man, where lies the body of none the indomitable and skilled chief tennis of the Winnowed Maroons who founded this town. So until you join us again a little later on, Kabu, this is Roger Haspel. Back to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Roger Haspel in Moortown, Portland. Uh, sounding good, sounding good. Thank you, Raj. Talk later. Yeah, man, bless. Give thanks. All right, Roger, there are the Nanny Day celebrations happening in Moortown. They're continuing into tomorrow. So if you can't check it out today, do the Zoom. And then tomorrow, um, the, the celebrations continue on the ground there. Or oh, until at 6 p.m., wherever you are in the world, as we go to the phone lines, my brother, uh, Dr. Ras Wayne Rose, is standing by just on the nick of time, um, as usual, rising to the occasion. Thank you so much, uh, my brother, for joining Yes, greetings and blessings. Love, my dear sister, Queen Kabul. Give thanks. Thanks for the opportunity again. My brother, you have, uh, under um, the organization that you are a part of, um, you have sent out uh, a document regarding what's happening on the Bob Marley beach. I'm so sorry because I'm having difficulty opening my documents this morning. But um, you, uh, you, 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 you have, you're speaking to this and I want you to give us an idea of what you have said in the written document, the, the perspective that you're coming from and your own views on what's happening as far as access and loss of access to beaches are concerned in Jamaica. Yes, you know, it's, it's one of those very unfortunate situations that seems to reoccur um, in increments in Jamaica, especially mm-hmm. Jamaica, um, where we find these t- types of acts, and we find them as acts of terrorism, really, on the cultural legacy, the history, and the contemporary ethos of the Rastafari movement and Rastafari people. And, you know, we, we see those groups uh, announcing plans to develop the Bob Marley Beach in Bogey. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be an exclusive beachfront uh, hotel. And those types of things, uh, whether through ignorance, through negligence, or, or just through arrogance, we find that these types of infringement keep happening on spaces, historical spaces, that are part and parcel of the, the cultural legacy and the mm-hmm. heritage of Rastafari. Mm-hmm. And we find that because of these types of attacks and because there's no sensitization of the people in Jamaica, it, these things just keep occurring and nobody is held accountable. Nobody recognizes that these things are critical mm-hmm. to the ongoing legacy of the cultural superpower that Jamaica has become and the region has become. And therefore we find, you know, a lack of documentation, a lack of preservation, and it seems as if the government of Jamaica rather have private people come in and usurp the cultural legacies and the spaces and the iconic uh, importance mm-hmm. of most of these things that are occurring. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of these things that have occurred in the history of Jamaica as part of the legacy of Rastafari. Yes. It's I... a part of the regressive act. Mm-hmm. And you know it's an act of the cultural and spiritual relevance of the beach of mm-hmm. the people, uh, and it's an injustice. It really is an injustice that must be addressed, and we can no longer ignore these things and allow for um, these things to be swept on the road, especially in the, in the moment of a, a, a justice and healing initiative. Mm-hmm. Where we're calling for a recognition of the, the, the sacrifices and the contributions that our people have made. Mm-hmm. In making Jamaica's cultural super poor, in making us as a people uh, having the ability to stand tall and proud of something that we created and gave to the world, now another of those items is being not just infringed on, but potentially taken away in the interest of profit. Yes. And while profit and business and these things are important components of the national development, so is cultural heritage, so mm-hmm. is cultural uh, renaissance and, and icons and, and sites and these things that makes 
uh, and speaks to the journey of, of, of our people. Why and do the you think, though? Why do you think, though, um, Dr. Um, Rose, that, that, that you just outlined um, the importance of our cultural heritage? We're in Heritage Week. The Prince Ermia Salas Salas is on the island as the grandson of his imperial majesty. And, uh, and so that there's, on the one hand, there seems to be an awareness to some extent of, of, of that heritage, of, of that legacy. But on the other hand, in practicality, what we're saying is totally different from what is being done by the very same government. Um, how, how, how do we even come to terms with this kind of schizophrenia? Well, you know, it's not, it's not quite schizophrenia, uh, uh, Queen Kabul, really. And we salute whenever the, the royal family of Ethiopia is part of our interactions, whether it is within the Rastafari community or the larger Pan African community. We salute the family, and we know that they are they're, they're relevant in this time, especially with a devolving uh, Ethiopian state. Of course, we just had Prince Ermias on this morning uh, actually yeah. talking to, you know, his relationship with Rastafari and so on. A very good interview at 7 o'clock this morning he was on. So we understand that as aspect of it. I'm talking about the schizophrenia of the Jamaican government in, in, in understanding yeah, on, on one hand um, that the, the, the legacy um, uh, and, and the cultural significance of Rastafari on the one hand and then on the other hand um, the displacement of, of Rastafari. And this, this kind of um, contradiction is what I'm talking about. Yes, my beloved, and since it's even, let us talk about the Bob Marley beat, let us look at some of the lyrics of Bob Marley in that, in that teach you a moment for it. So he says, don't let them fool you or even try to school you mm-hmm. because they have a mind and I'll add to it, they have objectives of their own. The mm-hmm. Jamaican government may have good people in it, you know, but they have been acting very malicious and terroristic against our community. Mm-hmm. And as part of the history and legacy, and no one seems to be willing, really willing, to change those things. And that's mm-hmm. why we call for justice and healing mm-hmm. or judgment. Mm-hmm. Because some people have benefited on the backs of the legacy of Rastafari, and it's time to stop. Yes. Not yes. just to, I mean, Rastafari is not just about themselves, it's about the people, but we also are people. Mm-hmm. We also are, are servants of a, a process and a system that we want to see as success. Mm-hmm. But it should not be success at the elimination or at the, the you know, the, the cost Mm-hmm. of our own survival. We cannot mm-hmm. do that. That mm-hmm. is suicide. And we have to fight as a cultural heritage and a spiritual legacy and as a way of life of people. Must not, cannot die. We cannot allow and sit down and allow these people to kill us mm-hmm. by eroding our history, mm-hmm. by eroding our life, the way we see our spirituality and our physical presence in the 21st century. We cannot mm-hmm. allow for that. Yes. Remember, you know, the Bob Marley Beach was like a de facto headquarters for the theocratic reign of the Nara being the order in the 1970s and 80s. Mm-hmm. That is the legacy that has spread across the world that we call the being the order. Mm-hmm. It was the encampment that developed the house, the Naya Bingi house, and its ritual, the polity of establishing an island where Naya Bingi celebration, that is where it comes from, the Bob Marley mm-hmm. Beach. Mm-hmm. It's where some of the first Rastafari residents came up in the late 60s and through 70s and 80s, the beach camp. Yeah. It was known as Lion Bay. Who, how many people remember that? Mm-hmm. It was a regular mm-hmm. location for Naya Bingi assembly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is where yeah. the first high priest of the Naya Bingi order, Bunga Puru, uh, took up residents and, and many of the other uh, elders who suffered displacement in Tivoli Gardens, let us call it. We, we yes. were at the bulldozering of Egypt and of the encampment mm-hmm. that uh, was part and part of the 1960s experience where most of our people, poor people in that area, just scattered all over. So after, after that encampment was destroyed, many of the elders today's elders would have gone to Lion, Lion Bay or the Bob Marley Beach mm-hmm. and started an encampment there. That is why it is important. This is where many of people like Mama Bubbles, Bongo Sheffern, Sister Carmen, Ras Vince and their families, Bongo Benji, Bongo Spence, Mama Burial, their family, Bongo Kualo, 
you know, Bongo Hill, Bongo I mean, so many people, Bongo Mac and their families, all of them were former residents of the West Kingston camp, and they left and went to, to Bob Marley Beach. That was over 50 years ago, in fact, 56 years ago, when, the, the, you know, the, the man who was prime minister not so long ago, who recently passed, Mm-hmm. Bulldozers are commissioned the bulldozering of those encampments in West Kingston, and so many poor people. Like and so it's important. You know, to, it's important to make. And you say it's important to make this connection to contextualize what is happening here in Heritage Week on the island. Um, when Rastafari is in the spotlight because of who the ministry has invited um, to come in. And this is why it's even hard for us to wrap our heads around this. Um, uh, Let us hope. uh, Today is a... um, uh, taking a stand day tomorrow, get up, stand up at the Bob Marley Beach. Once again, we're saying to the nation, let us just go and take a stand today and tomorrow to get up, stand up at the Bob Marley Beach, just the same. I know you're overseas, my brother, that you will not be able to make it, but you're writing on behalf of your organization, Sasas Crew. So I'm sure that the member organization members on the ground here um, will be participating. Yes. We anticipate that members of our board who are in Jamaica uh, will be participating. Some people may even travel for it. It's that important to the it school is. of Sacrament Rastafari it University. Is. It is. Because part is. of our mission is to engage learning. Yeah. And for those things that people, especially our people in the current reality, they kind of focus on some of these important things. So we need to bring it to their their, their remembrance. Yes. So people know what this is about. It's not exactly. about us making an un, un, unreasonable claim. Mm-mm. We're talking about spaces that Rastafari have yeah. lived and created this spiritual legacy that is now part of the experience of the thank world. Thank you so much, my brother, as always. Thank you so much, Dr. Rice Wayne Rose. Yes. People were going yes. fires with you and the energy with the, the, the feminine powers is right now, the energy that we need to be accelerating across the world. So thank you for standing tall on this and other issues. And may the Almighty Jah himself continue to bless, protect, and guide the good people of Jamaica and indeed the world. One perfect love, my sister, be well. Give thanks. And thank you again Give for thanks. the opportunity. Give thanks, my brother. Okay.